Hey everyone, what is up? Welcome back to Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel. Um, I'm ready to just jump back into it, man. The last two episodes were absolutely insane. Um, finally finished up some some work. I had a lot more schoolwork this weekend than I realized when I was uh, playing Fate as much as I was. Whoops. I didn't realize it was midterms week. <laughs> you hate to see it. But, um, got through it and I'm ready to record again. I am super excited to see what's going to happen after all of that. There's so many ways it could go from here. I just know all of the directions are most likely going to be insane. So, let's go ahead and jump right back into it. I opened my eyes. While staring up at the ceiling, I raised my arm and let it fall to the futon. I keep my eyes on the ceiling in a daze, not bothering to get up. My body feels dull. I'm not awake yet, and I feel like I need more rest. Even though it's morning already, I really don't feel like getting up. Dude, that is... That's just me every day, huh? I feel that. Maybe I'm fatigued. A lot certainly did happen yesterday, but, um, I don't think what happened last night would make me this tired. Guess so. I guess it did. The boy wasn't ready. I haven't been training for nothing. Must be because I didn't get that much sleep. Man, what blood? Too bad you lost it all. First of all, Sakura's in a worse state. She's pushing herself even harder, so I can't be resting just because I feel a bit tired. Mustering my resolve, I get out from the futon, and I get dizzy again. It's not because of fatigue, because when I look toward the doorway, I remember what happened last night. Oh yeah, it was wild last night, huh? Crap. This is causing me to blush. How in the hell can I greet Sakura? Oh boy, I can't even look at the door. I take another deep breath to prepare myself. It's alright. I've simulated it many times in my head. Simulated it? It's nothing difficult. I've greeted her numerous times before, so it's weird to be nervous. No, you didn't say that. Alright, I'm going. Put gasoline into my empty tank. I turn the key, kick the gas pedal, and enter the living room where Sakura is. <laughs> yeah. Y'all just... <laughs> I don't know how to, how, how to interact with each other right now, huh? Then, Sakura, who I thought would still be in the kitchen, is in the living room, putting breakfast on the table. Y'all are awkward, huh? I feel that, though. What? <laughs> I try to say something, but my head is blank. This is bad. It's bad to have silence so early in the morning. No, more than that. As a man, I can't trouble a girl. I talk stupidly. Wait, this greeting isn't any different from the earlier one, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Just repeating stuff now. Um, I think Sakura's response is the same as well. She looks at me in surprise, evidently thinking the same thing. To her, I must look the same way. Think about it. Thinking about it makes me relax. We were both nervous, but we were looking forward to seeing each other. <laughs> I give a natural smile and greet her again. The instant she sees me relax. Third time's the charm? So our awkward breakfast starts. Even though we can do all the usual formalities, I'm still I'm still nervous. I eat restlessly. Sakura must have gotten over it. She's eating in a good mood. Hmm. Are girls stronger in this regard? 
かしましたあお味噌汁のおかわりですか Man, I'll take some miso soup. I know that's not what he's thinking about right now, but. Yeah, Mada i p a i m e Kedo Maizo. Oh, Sugoku Mai. Hi, Kisano, what did she say? This car. You're a good one, I tell you, she does. Her smile makes me choke. It's embarrassing to be blushing when soccer is already composed, so I start eating to hide it. <laughs> That boy's shoveling down food to hide his embarrassment. <sighs> I put down the empty bowl, but the side dishes are still untouched. Goodness, I don't know why I'm yawning so much. It was all I could do to finish the rice and miso soup. I don't even want to think about eating anything else. But it can't be helped. Forgive me, Sakura. I want to get away from here and give myself a chance to calm down. Senpai, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Strategic retreat failed. Seems I'm the only one who didn't notice that there's no escape. I hand her the bowl silently. <laughs> She's not gonna let you go anywhere, Brody. There is no escape. And if, if you try, she's finna turn into an axe murderer. You're gonna lose your legs. You're gonna lose your legs. I take the refilled bowl and resume breakfast. I guess it can't be helped. I'll prepare myself. I'll just have to deal with the fact that I'm blushing. I won't make excuses for looking at every move Sakura makes. But still. Sakura, <laughs> Is Ryder sitting there watching them? Oh, wait. I feel like it, it, it. I don't know who this is about. Is this, this could be about like Tosaka or something. Very, very likely could be. It'd be funny if Ryder's just sitting there, like, staring into his soul or something, and he's like, it's not a problem. She looks at me in wonder. In other words, it is! <laughs> Seems as the presence of Ryder sitting silently next to her doesn't bother Sakura at all. I mean, it is her servant. I take a look at Ryder. She must have realized she's out of place. Her elegance is a match for Sakura's. A little bit. We even killed her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd feel nervous just sitting there eating breakfast with her after all that. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, he's worried it's the other way around. <laughs> This is troubling. I don't have a grudge against her, but she has a rank of A plus in terms of people I can knock it along with. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and add that to the status screen. Just go to Rider, then uh, skills, uh, people Shiro can knock it along with A plus. We can't exactly kick her out, but I'm not exactly a fan. I'm troubled. I'm troubled, so. How do we deal with Ryder at breakfast? I mean... On one hand, there's the truth, right? <laughs> Which is, we find her hard to deal with, right? It's kind of strange seeing her here after all of this. But on the other hand, we're probably going to have a lot of interactions with Ryder in the future. So is it really a wise move? <laughs> Is it really a wise move to blatantly be like, yeah, no, I, I can't like deal with you? 
right? I feel like this just is falsehood, like saying, yeah, I really like her. Like, why? She'd be like, no, you don't. Like, nobody believes that. Um, I don't know. Maybe just kind of try to keep it natural. This is probably a completely pointless and dumb decision that I'm overthinking right now. But you never know when a choice is going to come back to be relevant, you know? So let's just go ahead and try to keep it natural. Hmm. To be honest, I can't quite figure out how to deal with her. But I already know Ryder is my ally. The reason I can't calm down is not that Ryder is here, it's that... Ryder, Asameshi kuwanai no ka? Ore to Sakura ga tabeteru no ni hitori de seiza shiteru dake ってのは izurai daro. Fair. Um, I feel bad because it feels like I'm forcing Ryder to fast. She, she's mad for some reason. なんでさ、サーバントだって腹は減るんだろ。お、セイバーは黙ってても良く食べたぞ。彼女は私たちとは別です。私は人間としての栄養摂取に興味がありませんし、それにあなたたちの作法は私には合いません。まあ、まあ
and he's willing to take these risks that a lot of people could die to save Sakura, right? Um, and so, in, in a way, it's like, it's pretty selfish compared to past Shiro. It's just kind of, it's just jarring to me, seeing a Shiro who actually has a reason to obtain the Holy Grail and isn't like, yeah, I guess you can have it, Saber. Like, and I mean, even in the Fate Route, when he did end up with a legit reason, he just said, no, I'm good. Like, Kodamine was like, literally, I will hand it to you. Right? And Shiro was like, no, I'm good on it. Like, and I was like, yeah, we gotta, we gotta get the Grail. We gotta win this war. Like, it's just strange. I'm taken aback by her uneasy tone. I vaguely understood. Sakura doesn't want to fight. She should know the Holy Grail is the best way to cure her, but she's not even considering it. Hatred of battle. Sakura is terrified of harming others. She's right, and I have no intention of contradicting her. Sakura, Sakura can stay that way. I'm the one who's made her cry all of this time. Therefore, it's my job to fight for her. Ah, that's very true. No matter how we use it, it's definitely best to keep it out of Zoken's hands. I don't know exactly what your plan is to accomplish that, but best of luck, man. Man, that is the last thing I want to do, but I mean, we're going to have to, frankly, we're going to have to. And I mean, we already got a light amount of training from Tosaka. Not much, but the important thing is that she told us that projection is what we should be focusing on. So we, there's a chance we get like, not unlimited blade work strong, but like strong-ish. あいつが邪魔をするなら戦う。that's so wrong that it's not even funny. Like, Sakura obviously doesn't know that, but... Tosaka thinks about Sakura a lot, right? And is very concerned about her well-being. Um, she wasn't willing to put it over the lives of potentially tons of innocent people, right? And made that choice in the last episode, in the bad... Or made the choice just in general that she was going to kill Sakura, right? Um, to prevent... That, but we, we even saw in the bad end that that choice drives her crazy, right? Um, and like she can't just do that, right? Like Sakura is really important to her, like with like undeniably. And I mean, I, I get why Sakura would think otherwise, but I feel like that's the first thing she'd think about, frankly. I can't say it's not true. Sakura's a nice person. I already know that. But with that aside, Sakura's a magus. I mean, that's true. Last night, she said she would kill Sakura. I mean, does Tosaka really have a wish, though? I've, actually, I feel like she has a... I don't even remember. I feel like she said she had a reason to obtain the Grail, and I just don't remember what it is. Right, um... I don't know. I actually don't remember. I'm gonna assume she did. But... My, my thought is, yes, she would kill Sakura, but if she had the Grail, I feel like there's a good chance she'd be willing to save Sakura, right? If, like, if at the same time it means nobody's getting hurt. Like, that's what I'm feeling right now. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just dreadfully wrong, but... Last night, she said she would kill Sakura, even though that might have been the only choice at the time. She was willing to take it, so... The Holy Grail turns out not to be able to save Sakura. She would surely use the Holy Grail, something far superior to Archer, to kill Sakura. You are right about that. 
you're 100% right about that. If it can't save Sakura, she would absolutely kill her. So, maybe that's fair. Maybe that is a reason to keep it out of Tosaka's hands. Maybe I just like Tosaka too much, so I'm putting too much, uh, too much faith in her. Right, but when you put it like that, she would absolutely do that. That's right. But I can't kill Sakura with Tosaka. どうして truly has as much power as it says, I'd agree with that. I feel like she would do that. Man, saying that sets this up for her not doing that. If you ask me. Still not exactly on board the Tosaka tree. I, I mean, I can't blame her, right? I feel like I, if I were in soccer shoes, I'd probably have a lingering resentment for Tosaka as well. Given that, I mean, Sakura is the one that got adopted to a family, right? And then was promptly abused in that family, and that family made her life hell. Right, I'd probably resent Tosaka, who got to stay in the Tosaka household, right? Um, I really should just call her Rin, but like, I, I just don't. I'm so used to calling her Tosaka because of the game. Uh, even though I call most people by their first names, I don't for Tosaka. But anyways, point is, uh, and Tosaka was in her household, I mean, mostly alone. Um, but, like, not living a life of abuse, you know? Um... I mean, she lived like a life of neglect, I guess, because no one was there, but wasn't actual abuse and, like, sexual assault, right? Um, I'd probably be pretty resentful of her, too, right? Especially because while she is behind the scenes trying to help Sakura, I, I feel like she wasn't actively trying, actively making it clear that she's there to help Sakura. But, I mean, I guess that's also because there wasn't there the pact that they had to, like, stay out of each other's business, basically? Right, the two families, so it might just be that. But, like, again, and then all of that, that lingering resentment, plus the fact that yesterday she was blatantly trying to kill Sakura, right? She was going to kill Sakura if we hadn't stopped her, right? And would have killed her, right? If we hadn't, like, been there to protect her, right? And, I mean, let's be real. Tosaka could have mollywopped us in our house yesterday if she wanted to. Um, I guess for some reason she has faith in us, right, to somehow save Sakura. But again, if I'm in Sakura's shoes, I'd probably, uh, not exactly love Tosaka right now. Ah, but honestly, I I chose to lead Sakura's way, so I can't give that role to anyone else. I'm going to do my best to make Sakura happy. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you must not know Shiro very well if, uh... You think that's gonna stop him? Senpai,もう生配戦争に関わる必要はありません。だから今までどおり、どうか先輩の日常に戻ってください。No. I participated in this war as Saber's master. I didn't become a master because I was dragged into it. I became a master by choice. Then I can't withdraw now. I'll fight, even if I have to do it alone. I will see this conflict to its end. This is also my atonement for Saber, who lost her life fighting for my selfish goals. 
that was that, he's calling that selfish i mean in a way it was selfish right in the fact that saber had absolutely no reason right beyond just the general good to want to try to fight the the spirit or the shadow right um like it didn't gain her anything and Shiro still had her fighting but like I don't know trying to save everyone from that shadow doesn't it's not exactly what I'd call selfish I guess maybe the fact that he dragged Saber into it is though it had just been him but oh yeah これから I think she was just kind of hoping we could weather the storm. But that's literally just not going to work. Sakura agrees with silence. Good. It seems she understands. よし。じゃあ、これからの話なんだけど、その前に… I glance at Ryder. Getting used to her presence, but I want to do something about this. I'm gonna guess she needs magical energy to actually use the, like, <laughs> the petrifying abilities of her eyes. But I feel like my first thought when I'm talking to Medusa isn't, yeah, you should take off your blindfold. <laughs> Oh man. I mean, that's true, but. Isn't it uncomfortable? That's true, but. Isn't あなたの意見次第では私も考えますがダメです。そんなの絶対ダメ。She said, "No, you don't get to be beautiful while Shiro is here." Absolutely not. Wait. Why is Sakura objecting so desperately? なんで?お、桜だってライダーが目隠ししてたら困るんじゃないのか? <laughs> <laughs> I think she could probably control them. <laughs> I mean, this is Medusa we're talking about. I mean, this is Medusa we're talking about. ライダー、自分の目をコントロールできないのか。できませんね。それゆえの称号です。ですが、昨日ほどの効果は望めないでしょう。あなたは私の魔眼が石化だと知っている。不意打ちによる認識戦場は弱まっていますから、体が硬直
Hmm. I don't really understand, but it seems Ryder's going to keep her blindfold on. So, would have been kind of cool to see her with her blindfold off for like a good chunk of the rest of the route. Okay, my bad, okay. When did her previous light hardness go? Right, her suddenly acting cold now. She's hard to understand. I guess I just can't get along with her all that well. Yeah. I guess in the meantime, we have to hope he doesn't attack Sakura? Ilya? I hesitate to answer if she asks me like that. There are several possibilities, but I haven't put any thought into them. The choice will likely determine our fate. There are many choices. Of them all, the most realistic and reliable method would be... Yeah, okay. I thought they were about... That, that felt like they were leading into a choice. I was like, whoa! I mean, that's what I would have chosen, but... Oh, is he talking about Tosaka or Ilya? Another female, unlucky. To be honest, I can't leave her all by herself. Leaving Tosaka aside, I don't know what Zoken will do. He's the kind of guy that would implant a worm in Sakura and force her to fight. Ilya and Berserker should be many times stronger than Zoken in combat. We're talking about that monster. I'm sure he'll use any means possible precisely because he can't beat them in combat. So even those two should be careful. Um, best shot. <laughs> Yeah, fair. The girl that came to this town alone. Billy was raised as a master and crowned with the name Einsburn, so she's not a total stranger to me. So Yeah, she showed me where our house is. Ah, I saw you in my house. I remember the town. It's a big town, I was pressed to make a decision, but this is good. Lily helped me yesterday, so I want to thank her for that. And it might prove fatal for her if I don't tell her about Mato Zoken and that mysterious shadow. Yeah, it likely would. できるだけ早く帰ってくるから、桜は部屋で休んでいてくれ。わかりました、先輩。それなら、せめてライダーを連れて行ってください。何かあっても必ずライダーかま持ってくれますから。ああ、that'll be no, she's in greater danger because she can't oppose Zoken if she meets him. Yeah. Ryder nods obediently, apparently thinking the same thing. And I think Ilya is 
we're pretty cool with us in this route, especially given our choice to protect Sakura, right? Um, I feel like she was really disappointed in us if when we made the choice to uh, kill Sakura, um, because we just turned into Kiritsugu again, who was willing to put aside everything, like, like personal, right? All of their personal like things uh, for the greater good, right? Um, and she was pretty disappointed with us. Uh, she was really happy with us when we made the choice to protect Sakura, because in her eyes it proves that we're different than Kiritsugu, right? Um, so I don't think she has any interest in killing us because of those two reasons, right? We're not a master, and we're not like <laughs> we're not Kiritsugu, right? Like 2.0. Um, so she doesn't need to kill us for revenge necessarily. And she doesn't need to kill us to win the war, so. I pat her on the shoulder and leave the living room. Well, I'll go to the shed first and find something I can use as a weapon. And the whole idea that you make your own weapons? Sakura sees me off as I go. A shinai bag with two wooden swords inside and another bag filled with light food are the only things I'm carrying. I didn't bring a map or a compass. It's a route Ilya showed me with her magic, so all I can rely on is my memory and my instinct. Sheesh. I hope that's all the time it'll take. I'll ask the taxi driver to go slow and find the entrance to the forest. I'll get off the taxi when I find the entrance and continue on foot from there. I'll make it to Ilya's castle before sunset if I take the shortest route. I'll figure out what to do next once I've met Ilya. Shiro. Then... I hear a familiar voice from behind me. It sounds practical and cold depending on how you hear it. But my name is said politely, with as much intimacy as she can show. I'll say Nope. And I'll say the name, voicing my impossible wish. Nope. Yeah, that description honestly made me think Saber as well, but Shiro. <laughs> Uh, especially just the way he described it. It just... I feel like we really haven't felt that impacted by the loss of Saber yet. Right, like, it's going to become more and more relevant. Shiro has been personally impacted in the sense that he said, like, this is, like, my retribution for letting her die from my selfish goals, right? So he is personally impacted, but I feel like it's going to become a much bigger thing eventually. Right. Um, even if it's just the, by the absence of Saber, right, um, who was always there, like, to bounce off of Shiro, right, and who we had a really good relationship with. It's just so strange not having her, you know, going those two full episodes without her being there. That just feels wrong, man. Even though she was gone for a good chunk of Unlimited Blade Works, it just feels so wrong. Oh, What's Ryder got to say? I turn around and accept reality. Ryder is in front of me. The girl who used to call me with that tone is no longer in this world. いいけど、なんだ。ま、こっちも急いでるからな。手短に頼む。私の質問は一つだけです。あなたはさくらを守ると言った。その理由を私はまだ聞いてはいません。エミヤシロ。それ、俺は信用できないってことが。え。<笑
目的はあくまでさくらの体を救うため何だろうさくらに聖杯を取らせ自分の駅とする気はないと Man, before this, we, we weren't even like trying to obtain the grail necessarily. We we're just trying to keep bad people from it. Yeah, sure. I don't know what the grail is, but if you can use the grail to be happy, I'll use the grail to be happy. 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 Better just stands there without saying anything. Seems she understands why I'm embarrassed to tell people about this. Yes. Rider no stmon ni kotai tan dakara. Kondo a kotchi no banda. All right. Yobo ga arun dakado, kite kreru ka. Eh. Eh. Watashi ni dekiru hai de nara. Kikito doke masu. She looks dumbly embarrassed right now. She's like, ugh, that was really the reason. Like, ugh, good lord. Like. That's second-hand embarrassment. Ah, 簡単なことだ。さっきの呼び方だけど、白って発音じゃなくて、違うアクセントにしてくれないか。うん。わ、わかりました。白でいいのですか。あ、いや、それじゃ白だ。もうちょっとなんていうか。えっと、し。シドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウシドウ She has a sharp image because of her blindfold and her black clothing, but Ryder is actually sociable. I'm just guessing, but I think Ryder is a klutz in her private life. Sorry, I'll be the same as the other one. Shiro. The sound is good, isn't it? Shiro. Well, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't even want to be reminded of, uh... I didn't even want to ever be able to mistake that it'll save her again. Wagamama. Wagamama. あなたは素人と呼ばれることが不快なのでしょうなら私に発音を訂正させるのは正しいと思いますがまさかさっきの呼び方は好きだった That's right I liked it so I don't want anyone else saying it the same way I know it's a stupid thing to care about but she was the only one I wanted to hear call me like that 本当にただのわがままなんだライダーが悪いわけじゃないわかりましたあなたがそう言うのなら、私も理由は問いません。まあ、それじゃあ行ってくる。さくらのことをよろしくな、ライダー。I wave to Ryder and start running. I'll go to the intersection and catch a cab. Then I'll go to the suburbs and look for the forest entrance that I only saw once. Alright, time to meet with Ilya. Oh, interlude time, I should have known. Would it really be a Heaven's Feel episode if there was no interlude? <laughs> she is left alone. There's no reason for the boy to fight. The one who is no longer a master walks into danger while she, the dangerous cause, is resting. The fact that, that fact depresses her even more. The servant asks her master. The girl does not nod, but narrows her eyes and shakes her head once. そんなもの、今さら何の意味もないそうですね確かに意味のない質問でしたええけど辛いことだけじゃない私ね不謹慎だって分かってるのに嬉しいの先輩が私のために何かしてくれるのは純粋に嬉しいから But her face is filled with agony. The mouth that says she's happy is heavy, as if bound by a feeling of guilt. Pretty good one, actually, but. 
It's troubling for her if he stays. Oops. It's troubling for her if he stays in the war any longer. It will bring a bad fate down upon them both. That's why she wants him to simply return to his normal life. She will not last long. That being the case, she wants him to live. But at the same time, she clings to hope. As long as he fights, she can be with him. No, she delights her that the person she loves is fighting and getting hurt for her sake. She doesn't want him to fight. But having him fight makes her happy. The two contradictory wishes compete for control within her. It's interesting. It makes sense. <laughs> it's not strange, like, to think about either of them. Like, she wouldn't she wouldn't want him to fight, right? Because, first of all, she, she doesn't like fighting much to begin with. Uh, she doesn't want Shira to potentially get hurt or anything like that. Um, but then, I mean, on this, like, at the same time, you know, he's willing to fight for her, right? Um, to maybe create some sort of hope. I, I can see why she'd have those two contradictory wishes. With a pained murmur, she acknowledges the darkness within her. Yes, she wants him to fight. She wants him to save her. She wants him to answer her to make up for all the times he did not. Dang. Dang. For that reason, he can get hurt. She thinks about something she shouldn't. Oh lord, here we are again. She clutches her chest. As if responding to her dark passions, the worms within her stirs against her nerves. It was only for an instant. She imagined him getting hurt for a mere instant, and the worm has begun to violate her once again. Wriggle, 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 wriggle. The squirming in her body makes her ears ring. Ugh, that is gross. It melts into her blood, causing a chill to run through her body. The feeling stimulates her, and she thinks her body is lewd and evil. The worm that melted into her blood becomes aphrodisiac, heating up her body. The waves threaten to wash her consciousness away. She always thinks with her heated head. But her limbs are too dirty to be called human limbs. Sexual desire easily fills her body, and she clings on the ground in a vulgar manner. Her panting does not stop, and her hips wriggle like mucus. It is no different from the thing entangling her nerves. The worm violates her nerves the more she tries to deny it. Her consciousness is melted away, and... She feels like she's a worm herself. And in the end, an ominous feeling dominates her whole body. Sakura. Sakura. わたしは行使するということは、あなたの余命を削ることです。どうせ長くないもの。いや、いくつ。私今はちゃんとしてるけど、気を抜くとね。自分が何をしていたかわからなくなるの。She's really going through the ringer right now, huh? She says it as if it's nothing. She's accepted death. She's fighting the ugliness of clinging to hope, and she has ordered her to protect him. She forces a smile. The servant in black nods and turns her back to her master. Oh, 
危なくなったら先輩を連れ帰ってきて。Man, I hope it doesn't come to that. わかっています。けれどさくら、私はあの老人ではなく、あの神父こそを注意すべきだと思うのですが。You are correct. To be concerned. It's debatable which one is the bigger concern, but. The writer speaks without looking back. That's a surprise for her. The servant does not state her opinions. She silently does as she is told. She has never shown concern for her the way she does now. So, ne. I think. Honto, I so moa. Part of me wouldn't be surprised if Kodamine somehow made this worse. I would simultaneously be. Not surprised if he actually did put everything he could into healing Sakura, right? Just to make things more interesting, right? And, and because he's a priest, right? But I also would not be surprised at all if it was like a ha ha, I actually made her lifespan even shorter, right? Like that wouldn't surprise me at all in any way whatsoever. She murmurs as if singing. Either way, we know he's dangerous. That's the point. Her grief dispelled. She's now filled with languorous elegance. But I'm happy to be here, Dai. Because that person... I don't have a chance to win. Oh god, that's frightening. She smiles like a girl picking flowers. That is an extremely frightening thing, thing to leave off on. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay. Man, Sakura is just she is a she's an interesting character. Constant like back and forth with her like it, it, she there's the normal Sakura and the dark Sakura within her, I guess is the best way to put it. A lot of contradictory emotions and feelings. Um and that's really interesting, right? Um like just there in that scene alone, we see her go from like And I really don't want anyone to fight. Like, I don't want to fight to, oh, Kodamine, I don't need to worry about him because he can't defeat me. And I'm like, what? Like, good lord. Okay. <laughs> sure. And just the way she said it, too. Right? It wasn't even a just, if it comes to it, I know I can use my, use my power and defeat him. It was just a, oh, I'm not too worried about him. I was like, oh, okay. That frightening tone. Her voice actor is really doing a good job in making her character that much better. Gotta say. Um, oh, man. Um, it's, there's just a lot of interesting stuff with Sakura. You know, it was another interesting interlude. Because there's there really are, like, two sides to Sakura. And, I mean... I, I'm kind of saying the same thing again. But, like, that interlude alone just shows both of them. Like, you know, the, the normal side. Um, where... She wants Shiro to be safe, but at the same time, she's secretly happy that he's fighting for her. But no, she shouldn't be, and Ryder go protect him. But she had that thought of him getting hurt, right? You know, and that, that, that dark thought. It's just so interesting. Very interesting. Let's move on, though. A few minutes' walk from the National Highway. Even though I've never seen it in person, the forest entrance looks familiar. It's white like morning mist, even during the day. The dim sunlight and fog steal the sense of time from this place. I can't believe how reckless I'm being. I didn't get lost back then because I was watching it through Ilya, but this isn't something I can manage by memory alone. Yeah, I'll figure it out. I put spirit in myself as I put the bag over my shoulder. It's past noon. It takes about four hours to reach Ilya's castle from here, according to what I saw. All I can rely on now are my physical strength, memory, and recollection skills. Man, good luck. I walk through the forest. The smell of sap is a bit suffocating. The unpaved path is tiring to walk on. It's been two hours, and I think I'm following the route Ilya showed me. But it's worrying that there's no sign to confirm that I'm on track. I can keep walking all day because of my training, but mental fatigue is chipping away at my energy. If memory serves, I still have two hours to go. I can easily imagine what will happen if I don't end up at the castle in that time. My physical limit is far, but, it'll make tr but I'll make trivial mistakes with a disturbed mind. Rehydration and monitoring your condition are your highest priorities during mountain climbing. 
You have to worry about which foot you step with and the depth of the bare rock you're scaling. Even though the forest isn't as dangerous as a mountain, this place is a different kind of danger. Losing your sense of direction, not knowing where you are. There's the danger of getting lost, and who knows what beasts you might encounter. The beasts living in this vast forest are likely to have their territories. When people stray into those territories, they're usually attacked. Walking aimlessly is like asking to be attacked, and even a straight animal trail needs to be avoided from time to time. Fortunately, snakes don't seem to exist in this forest. All I see are traces of wild dogs, and that's rare too. I bet there aren't many living things here because of the magic of Einsburn on this forest. There are a few wild dogs, and there may be far worse things. It's really different, him making this trek alone, having to worry about the wild animals. I go around the thicket that an animal may be lurking in, may be lurking in and make my way according to memory. Discretion is the better part of valor. It's a rule of thumb to simply avoid dangerous places rather than waiting until the danger confronts you and then running away. Man, let's hope you didn't take a wrong turn then. The air around me feels different. An ominous chill runs down my back with every step. Don't go any further. Get out of this forest now. Nobody will return alive from this forest today. I feel like the swaying trees are warning me. Out of a sap, but that's not quite right. The sweet smell is nothing like the forest. This is. Uh oh. Probably. Uh oh. I take out a wooden sword from my bag. Oh yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it against the shadow. I stop, concentrate, and strengthen it within a few minutes. Man, did you do you really have a few minutes right now? You gotta work that out. I hear footsteps from the other side of the thicket. I hear sounds among the swaying branches. It's coming. It comes out and heads straight for me. I raise my wooden sword. It's probably Ilya. Tensing my arms, I grip the sword and stand ready. Ah, hey, what's up, Tosaka? That is not what I expected. We both freeze. Well, how should I handle this situation? Tosaka lowers her guard first. I follow her example. Man, yeah, no kidding. So... <laughs> no. Probably. Probably both looking for Ilya's mansion. She protests. The surprising part here is that she's not denying that she's planning something. I get right to the point. Yeah, he just doesn't care about that, though. He'll, he'll do it anyways. けど。なんでよ。もしかしてイリアとさくらを組ませるって腹? Yes. Her sharp tone gone, Tosaka shrugs in resignation. That's Tosaka's real face that she had on before that thing happened to Sakura. なんだよ。一度決めたことなんだから、そう簡単に変えられるわけないだろ。でしょうね。本当前々から思ってたんだけど。I don't know why, but Tosaka gives an exaggerated sigh. エミヤ君ってすっごいバカでしょ。Perhaps. And gives a smile that surprises even me. けどいいわ。懲りないやつだけど、あなたはそうでなくちゃ張り合いがない。無器用は不器用なりに、せいぜい努力することね。なんだその課長こった顔は。なんか無性に腹立つな。
いいからいいからでその格好からするにエミア君もイリアスフィールに用があるってわけね、yep. さっきは当てずっぽうで言ったけど本当にイリアスフィールと話し合いをするつもりなんだ I'm angry but the soccer just stares at me with a smile I don't know why, but I can never deal with Tosak in these situations. Like, I'll back myself further into a corner no matter what I say. Bro's not trying to take an L. That's right. Yikes. No. Crap. Me and my big mouth. You got that. So, I'm going to ask you 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 万が一私が先に到着しちゃったらもう話し合いどころじゃないと思うけど。Yeah, I suppose she will. お,お前、俺を脅迫する気か、like、threatening Ilya, but... 大体な、一緒に行ったところでイリアに喧嘩売るんだろお前は。売らないわよ。イリアスフィールと共闘できるなら、それに越したことはないもの。とりあえずやるべきことは造形の排除でしょ。Why didn't you just say that in the first place? イリアスフィールに忠告に来ただけだもの。忠告って何の？マトウ造形が何やら企んでるから、甘く見てると痛い目に遭うって。キャスターのこともあるし、バサカまでアナッチャこっちが不利でしょ ？That is correct. That would be tough. けど、そう忠告したところで戦いになるって覚悟してたけどね。私とあの子じゃ話し合いなんてできない。一応忠告してそれで戦いになるのなら仕方ないって思ってたいずれ倒さないといけない相手だし遅いか早いかの違いでしょ I mean, fair enough. Not wrong. でも見たところエミヤ君には当てがありそうじゃないなら冒険をする必要もないしエミヤ君の努力次第でことは丸く収まるってこと Let's hope so. ほら難しい顔しないあなたがイリアスフィールを説得できるなら私はおとなしく帰ってあげる。で、もし失敗したら、協力してあの子を倒すか、二人して逃げられるように手を貸すわ。どう悪い話じゃないんじゃない I suppose it's not, really. 悪い話も何も。お前、どうあったって俺の後をついてくる気だろう。まさか、そんなの言いがかりよ。<笑>たまたま行き先が同じってこともあるんだし。Something like that. <laughs> She's a devil. She'll listen to me so long as I'm guiding her. Osaka will go fight Ilya if I leave her be. She'll stay quiet if I take her with me. I sighed loudly, making sure Tosaka can hear it. The trees shake. I hear explosions in the distance. No, this isn't an earthquake. Something like a typhoon is raging nearby. Tosaka, Kore. Tosaka. Do you have to go to the house? Tosaka. 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 I'm kind of question is that. Hell no. There's no time to think. I. Man. Maybe we die. But if we die, we die. 
I feel like it's more important. We should probably see what's going on. I don't know why we'd back out now. Ooh. Are we gonna get to see Archer fight? Oh man, this could be it for Shiro. This could be it. This could be the moment. Tosaka starts running. Archer takes form, gives me a single glance, and takes the lead. I clench the wooden sword in my hand and run after them at full speed. Oh my goodness, with the interludes! I mean, I don't necessarily have- I don't have a problem with them, but why- why are there so many in this route? The girl flees the castle with the black giant. It is a baffling escape. She's abandoned her castle, the place designed to offer her the best defense, to run to the forest. Danger is approaching. The girl was the first one to sense the unavoidable fact. The enemy is approaching the castle. Because she felt that the enemy is a great one, she maximized the castle's defense and woke up the giant in anticipation of the enemy. The giant of steel, Berserker. Personification of destruction who has his sanity taken away and only obeys the girl. With her bodyguard and the castle's protection, she has nothing to fear. She tells herself this, suppressing her unease. But when the enemy drew near, her giant said, Run. Even the one with no reason left understood that he could not beat the approaching foe. The girl started running at that instant. She knows that. She already knew that. The thing that reached the outer wall is not something they can match. The ominous shadow expands with the sun behind it, and it becomes a great shadow to easily climb over the outer wall. They will lose. With her aside, Berserker cannot beat that thing. He will lose if he fights it, and Berserker will not be her servant anymore. That is the root of her uneasiness. She ran away from the castle, not in fear of her own defeat, but in fear of losing her servant. The black giant carries her as they make their way through the forest. The uneasiness does not go away, but assails her with increased weight. She cannot get away. The girl vaguely understands that she cannot get away from this uneasiness and fear, and the black giant stops. Oh, Hi, Zokin. That's what we don't like to see. In front of them is a withered magus. Next to him is Assassin, wearing a white skull mask. Mato Zokin. She figures out right away he is the magus of Makiri that she was informed of when she left her home country. Mato Zokin. The girl jumps to the ground and confronts the old man. There's no fear in her eyes. The enemy before her is not the terrifying one she sensed. The girl coldly glares at him as he laughs. The Holy Grail does not choose, just like the old man says. Masters are chosen by the Holy Grail, servants are given form with the Holy Grail's power, and they stay in this world with the help of the masters. The rules are intentionally distorted and spread around. The girl knows that the purpose of the Holy Grail War is actually the other way around. The Holy Grail is merely something to be filled. Masters are not chosen, but prepared as part of the ritual. Yep. Yeah, that is correct. And servants are merely tools used to open the gate. <laughs><笑> The Holy Grail that becomes the container has no will, but the Great Holy Grail that chooses the Masters does. Okay, so there's two separate Holy Grails. Is that what she's saying? Seems like it, frankly. The Holy Grail that becomes, the, like, the vessel, right? That is filled with the heroic spirits. That is that has no will, right? But the the great holy grail, it does and, ha and it uh, chooses the masters. Is that what she's saying? It seems like it. Ooh. 
Dang. Her voice is cold. The old man accepts her scorn with a laugh. いや、いや、心配にはSheesh, she's putting the flames on him, low-key. You're well, seize the vessel and eliminate a master at the same time. Hostility lights up in the old man. The white skull gets up, but stops in contrast to the old man's wish. It's obvious why. The white masked assassin is overawed by the giant who's protecting the girl. He has no chance to defeat such a foe. He'll be cut in half with one blow if he steps in. The assassin does not move because he is sure of that fact. <laughs> That they do. That's all they really value. There's no reply. Assassin does not speak, but his master laughs in his place. Oh, that's the last person who needs immortality, too. Hatred shows in the girl's eyes. His grin widens still further. It's as if he was waiting for that scornful reaction. こうしている今も脳細胞は蓄えた知識を失っていくのだ。その痛み。生きながら崩れ行く苦しみが、お主に分かるか。I guess we know Ilias stands on prolonging human life. The old body trembles. The madness shakes as if wrecked by coughing and... Ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-
ねえあなたそんなに死にたくないの無論わしは死ぬわけにはいかんこのまま死にたくはないまだ世にとどまり生を続けなくてはならんだがそれもすでに限界家に崩れぬ体永劫を不滅の器が欲しいそのためにそのために聖杯を手に入れようというの死が恐ろしいから聖杯を求めるのいや<笑>死が恐ろしくない人間がいるのかねよいかいかな真理いかな境地にたどり着こうと無駄なこと事故の消滅世界の終焉を克服することはできん I mean, you're not wrong. 最後に知っておけ目の前に生き延びる手段があり手を伸ばせば届くというのなら何者をもたとえ世界そのものを犠牲にしても手に入れるのが人間だとな also not wrong. じゃああなたは自分が生き続けるために他の人間をみんな犠牲にするっていうのおうよそれで我が望みが叶うというのなら世界中の人間を一人一人殺して回っておるわ。いや、これが最後のシロー would want to live。人の強欲は尽きぬもの。お主とて木々の一本一本が寿命を伸ばす妙薬とすれば、この森など瞬く間に食らいつくそう。たとえそれが物が一日のために世界の一部を殺していく。その願望はこの森だけでは飽き足らず世界中の金を殺すことになろう。It's an その行いによって他人が滅びようと知ったことではない。Because she didn't. 当然であろう。もとより人間とはそのようにしてここまで広がり、育ち、増え、肥満しきったうぞうむぞう。そこにもはや連鎖すべき法則など成り立たぬ。いずれ破綻するのであればわし一人が足並みを崩したところで誰にも異論は挟ませぬわ。ゾーカンズは面白いキャラクター、ありがとうございます。The old man speaks happily after looking at him in surprise. アキレタワー、そこまで見失ってしまったの。アキリ。いや、no kidding。The girl speaks in a voice not her own。思い出しなさい。私たちの悲願、奇跡に至ろうとする絶望は。どこから来たものなのか私たちは何のために人の身であることにこだわり人の身であるままに人あらざる地点に到達しようとしていたのかを何ふん The girl speaks in a voice not her own And he's really surprised about this So, is this Ilya just getting really serious all of a sudden? Or, frankly. Where our desire for a miracle came from? I don't know. Feels immensely dumb to think that, like, maybe her. I don't know. Like, could her, like, bloodline live on, like, within her? Right, and she somehow has some of their memories. Like, I don't know. I don't know if that's possible. Maybe it seems a little ridiculous, but it almost just feels like somebody else is talking there. Right? I don't know. At the very least, it's an interesting thought. Let's just move on for now. His laugh stops. The old man just squints as if peering into the distant sky. Huh. <laughs> ユスティーツァーの真似事もすり込み済みというわけか。Who's mimicry? Justies? That's a name.、Hmm. He distorts his face in hatred and glares at the white girl. So what? Is that like the original Einsburn or something? Who's Justies? Because it almost seems like. And、their mimicry is implanted or imprinted within her, right? Maybe they did something to her that essentially gives her Justice's memories or mannerisms. 
お主の体はいるが心になど用はないアインツベルの聖杯このマキリ造剣がもらい受ける The old man's shadow creeps across the ground. With that, the pressure on the girl increases. Yeah, he's not just gonna let that happen, but the black giant enters battle without waiting for the girl's order. Oh, that was bait, huh? The girl's voice does not reach him. The black giant, accompanied by a whirlwind, mows down the pressing shadow, but. Oh no. Tell me he got. He got. I. He got did like Saber. Tell me he just got done like Saber did. Oh no. Sounds of wind. The wind running through the forest and shaking the trees is something I've heard before. The tremors are growing more intense. We're closing in on the source. It's probably on the other side of that next thicket. The battle to decide the strongest is raging just behind those dense trees. I have a feeling Berserker's gone, bro. My feet stop. A second before I burst into the open, I skid to a halt and hide myself. Basaka. Tosaka also hides behind a tree and stares at the disastrous scene in the clearing. The place is literally a battlefield. There are three servants fighting. One is the black giant, Berserker. Another is the white, skulled ma white, skull masked killer, Assassin. And the last one, the last one is. You're serious right now? Say it ain't so. No. Oh no. Oh no. Does that mean they also have caster? Or Lancer? Either way, them having. What is this? This is wrong. Say, this is not Saber. No. This is so wrong. Oh my god. Tosaka's voice is shaking. Can't really hear her. Even though she's right next to me, her whisper doesn't register for some reason. The third servant. I'm seeing the one clad in black armor for the first time, but. She reminds me of someone I know really well. The black giant howls. An attack powerful enough to destroy a mountain swings through empty space, smashing down into the ground. Yeah, I think this this track feels like it got reworked. This has got to be a different version. I don't remember this part. Even the flying rubble does not cause her to falter. The source of the raging wind must be that black swordsman, and the black figure makes her way through Berserker's sword and the flying clods and attacks at his defenseless body. The anguish is the giant's. His body of steel can nullify almost any attack, but the black swordsman cuts it like nothing. The sword stains the giant's side black, just like darkness consuming light. Yeah, I don't... Dude, it feels like Zokin's got this war in the bag. What? How are we supposed to win? Ilya sounds like she's crying. Mata Zokin laughs. 
The two masters, Hilly and Zokin, confront each other while their servants stand in front of them as shields. Are we? Oh my God! Is this about to turn out to an or turn into an all-out brawl, or are we just gonna skedaddle out of here? I don't know because if we have Rider, Archer, and Berserker, I'm not gonna say we have a good chance, but it's possible we could hold our own, right? That's an interesting thought. Oh man, that'd be chaos. In front of Zokin is Assassin, who must have been defeated by Berserker. In front of Ilya's Berserker, his entire body covered in black. The ground beneath his feet has turned into a black pond. It is not soil, but a bottomless swamp, sealing his movements. Oh, we've seen this before. Oh no. Not only that, but black veins are coming out of the swamp, restraining the giant's limbs. No! No, don't give him Berserker too! No, absolutely not! That shadow's dummy OP. I know what this is. This has to be the Black Shadow, but for an instant. It looks like something I know. Whoa, he thought to Sakura. The deafening crash shocks me back to reality. The situation is hopeless. Berserker is strong. Even though the Shadow has nearly engulfed him, he still stands against the Swordsman. But he's at his limit. The Black Swordsman charges and slashes at Berserker. Even if they are equally strong, Berserker's movement is further restricted with each passing second. Then, the balance will only further tip towards the swordsmen the longer they fight. Hmm. This rat is insane. His figure grows hazy. He vanishes from the forest, leaving Assassin behind. Yeah, that wouldn't be a very, uh, very, that wouldn't be very good for his purposes. His presence, along with his figure, fades away. Zokin has disappeared. The only ones remaining are Assassin and Berserker, and the Black Swordsman, raising her sword. I don't think he really has a choice right now. Like, he can't, he can barely move, I'd imagine. Lily murmurs in an emotionless voice, but, I mean, it's clearly very important to her. Like, Berserker, we know that, and it looks like he's about to die. What did he make of that? The giant advances with a roar. His advance is like a storm. Berserker charges, kicking away the black shadow that has swallowed him up to his knees. What? It is an impossible action. The mud below him isn't the only thing binding him, as the black shadow is coiled all, around, all about his body. He cannot move forward. Berserker cannot even take a step forward with his body bound by the black shadow. For that reason, he tore his body apart. He grabbed his chest and tore off the black shadow with a sound. What? This dude is different! He tore off his flesh along with the shadow, going deep enough to expose his bones. The giant bursts into motion. With the force of a whirlwind behind it, the next swing will surely destroy the black swordsman. It will be his last attack. He has ripped his body apart and is executing this attack on the verge of his death. There is no way his attack isn't fatal. And in response... Swordsman meets it with her strong attack. He's toast, bro. Ilya starts to run. She dashes frantically to Berserker, as if she doesn't see the shadow expanding at his feet. I can't do anything even if I go out now. I have no hope of winning against either the shadow or the swordsman. But still. But still. I have to stop Ilya. I jump out from behind the tree. I grab Ilya from behind as she runs towards Berserker. The mad warriors roar, the strong wind, an explosion that even takes away my vision. Yikes. Oh no. That was a really cool shot. They all flow into my numb ears at once. Oh, is she about to unleash like Excalibur? Could she do that? 
Did she still do that? I hold Illy in my arms as the wind knocks me to the ground. White light fills my vision, and I can't even manage to stand up. No, standing up never crosses my mind. My body feels hot. Something deep within me resonates with the attack. I don't understand why, but this heat is in resonance with the noble phantasm. My breathing has been deadened, just like my vision. I can't do anything right now. My body will not function as a human being as long as that sword is engraved in my eyes. I'm entranced. My heart is taken away by something I only saw for an instant. That thing is an illusion far superior to the numerous other noble phantasms. There are many that are crafted more splendidly and with better skill. But the beauty of that noble phantasm is not its appearance. No, to describe this sword as beautiful would only dirty it. The sword is not beautiful, but sacred. People's conception, legends weaved out only out of hope. It's not a myth, nor is that in human work. It is a crystal trained by heart alone. That is why that sword will reign as the strongest fantasy. Mm. Mm. My vision returns. Uh oh. Well, this is not what we want to see right now. The sky is lit with dark red light and is dark like night. The light that splits the forest must have been darkness itself. That's just backwards. No. The fire is burning silently, but the air is still cold. Is it something that freezes oxygen instead of burning it? The darkly lit forest lowers its temperature. The swordsman is standing with the black fire in the background. With Ellie still in my arms, I glare at the pointed sword. I don't feel any hostility from the swordsman. I fear my death, and at the same time, grip my teeth in vexation. It's different. She's a different person. It's not just her hostility. She's... I don't feel any of the nobility I previously felt from her. Her helm breaks. It must have been Berserker's last attack. Her face is revealed, and although she's completely different, she's still the same. That is just wrong. No. This is just wrong, man. Say... There's no reply. The now golden eyes do not reveal anything, but plainly look down at us. Sit Ilya's voice is trembling. The sword is pointed at her, and Berserker is sinking into the shadow behind Saber. The defeat of her servant and her impending death. Any young girl would tremble in this situation. Saber. I shake off any unnecessary emotions. I hug Ilya harder and put strength into my free right arm. Now's not the time to be spaced out. Going to save Ilya. Going to save Ilya and return to my home. I can't just cower and wait for my death. I don't know what the plan is here. Oh, Archer, okay. Archer's doing something. He's trying to pull something. Saber swings her sword. She tries to slash at me as I stand up, and at that instant, parries three arrows shot from her side. Archer. Yeah, y'all gotta go. Yeah, you caught a lucky break. Get out of there. Like, now. I get to my feet, still holding Ilya in one arm. Yes, you are correct. Please, listen to him, Shiro. Listen to Shiro, Shiro, alright? The swords clash. Archer shot at Saber and attacked her without pause. But it doesn't do much. Even with his godlike speed, Saber easily repels his twin blades. Yeah. And he said, what if we gave Saber a power-up? Yeah, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I don't know how we're supposed to make it out of this, man. Archer's acting strangely. Looking, I see that the black shadow is entangling around his feet. No! Him too? Yikes. The cool voice is definitely Saber's. She easily smashes the black shadow and... Jesus. <laughs> Sends Archer flying into the forest behind him. She's struck with enough force to throw him back, in spite of his defense in the shadow holding his feet. This is just wrong. I don't want to see this ever again. No. This is horrible. 
And once again, Saber confronts us silently. Her eyes. They tell me she's resolved to kill me if I do not hand Ilya over. Shiro. Ilya lets go of my arm. Seems she wants me to hand her over. And the last switch has tripped inside my head. I push Ilya behind me and grip the wooden sword with both hands. Oh yeah, that'll do it. Boy, you better figure out some projection, like, right now. I hold it at the ready, right in front of me. I'll drive all of my power and magical energy as soon as Saber charges at me. That's all I can do now. I have nothing to say to her. I can't apologize, nor can I tell her to come back. I can't say something like that when she hasn't said anything herself. Saber is in front of me as an enemy. And the only way to answer her is to fight with all my might. That's all you can do right now, but Jesus, it just feels so wrong. I take aim. I won't even try to take your life at the cost of my own. Saber taught me that such tactics are useless. An attack with the premise of your death is only effective against an opponent as strong as you. Against Saber, I can't hope for something as good as a mutual kill. Therefore, I'm only aiming at one spot. Her helmet's shattered, so her head must be damaged somewhat. That's where I'm going to strike with all my might. I'll defeat my enemy and live on. Unless I get that clear image in my head, I won't even be a match against Saber. I, hey, I like the confidence. I like the confidence. You're probably going to get your ass whooped, but I like the confidence. That's really all you can do right now. She's coming. Dodge it, dodge it, dodge it, dodge it. I don't care if I look miserable. I don't care if I have to crawl on the ground. Unless I dodge this attack, I can never protect Ilya. I'm dead. I fought Saber before, so I know this will be fatal. A lightning fast attack comes from the upper left. Slicing through my neck will be as easy as mowing rice. But, my head is still attached. Saber Sword stopped just shy of my throat. Part of her's still there. Part of her's still there. No. What happened? She silently sheathes her sword and jumps away. Or maybe we got, like, like supremely lucky. And Zokin called her back. But, I feel like part of her's still there. Could that be her reason? The black pond expands on the ground. The shadow is about to crawl out of there. Oh, is that it? Oh. Never mind. That's a much better reason. I'm sure of it. That's the thing I saw at the park the other night. Uh-oh. Here it is again. An unknown thing that's just like a cluster of curse. No, no, please don't. The what? And also... Yeah, this is an easy job. Okay. Man. I'll, I'll let you boast like that when I see you actually pull off an easy job yourself. I guess with the shadow it's an easy job, in all fairness. And it's hilariously easy if you take the shadow into mind. Saber walks over to the black mud, and she sinks into the mud, just like Berserker did. I watch her until she completely disappears. I don't care why she's still in this world, or why she's my enemy now. Now that we're enemies, all we can do is fight. It is the nature of this war. He's taking this surprisingly well. But still, I think for a second that she wouldn't have been stained black like that if I had been stronger. <laughs> Tosaka's voice brings me back to myself. In front of me are the approaching black shadow, an assassin, whose white mask is distorted with a smile. <laughs> yeah, good luck, man. I take Ilya's hand and start running. <laughs> Ellie takes one sad glance at the mud that swallowed Berserker and keeps back her tears as she starts running. Oh man. That thing has claimed at least Saber and Berserker. Right, alive, it would seem. And I'm gonna assume it has Lancer and possibly Caster as well. This is a problem. This thing's just gonna jug all the servants, huh? Like, we don't stop it now. Oh my god. Her writing skills are lost. Magic resistance B nullifies all magic that requires less than three verses. It is difficult to hurt her even using great or ritual magic. If she has a dark alignment, her magic resistance has decreased. Oh, we, oh I kind of wish we could see old sabers so I could compare their stats. I can safely say they're higher, but... 
instinct be? Ability to al always feel the best course for one's help during combat because she is con continually suppressing her rage. Her instincts have become more blunt. Magical energy burst. An enormous amount of magical energy always covers Black Saber's body like a dense fog. With her black armor and her trail of mana, her defense has increased considerably. Yikes. Charisma. E. Talent to command and lead a great army. Increases the ability of one's allies in a battle between armies. Her leadership is increased, but the morale of her soldiers decreases dramatically. Sword of Promised Victory. Since Excalibur is an amplifier that transforms the, ma uh, the magical energy of its possessor, the light of the Holy Sword of Black Saber has also turned black. Yeah? As the ladies of the Lake Vivian and Morgana coexist, the Holy Sword seems to have attributes of both good and evil. Anti-Castle. <laughs> Range 1 to 99 can target up to 1,000 people. Good lord. That thing's cracked. To an observer, it looks like a giant beam of light, but its target point is the tip. It is the ultimate slash that cuts through everything in the area the light goes through. It is enormous power heats space around the tip, and as a result, is interpreted as a wave of light that mows across the earth. You could also call it a directed energy weapon. And yeah, it's not light anymore, it's dark. Alignment, lawful evil. No, that's wrong. Stop. I don't want to see this. This is just wrong. And what, Berserker's gonna end up down here at some point too? I'm gonna guess. Come on. Is he? Like, are they gonna do that? They might. Thank goodness. This is just wrong, man. This is just wrong. We run through the forest. In front of me is Tosaka leading the way. Behind us is Assassin, pursuing us through the trees. Well, yeah, we know. She must be worried about us. Even though she could have escaped by now, she slows down and turns to look at us. I know that the enemy is right behind us, but I can't shake him off. Servant Assassin is after us. There's no way I can shake him off and I have Ilya with. <laughs> I hear an ominous voice right by my ear. When I look to my side, yikes, I see a white death's head smiling as he licks the dagger. The masked figure is knocked away. Boy, I mean, that's gotta be Archer, right? While running beside me, Assassin was thrown off guard by a kick to the side. <laughs> I'm glad he's still acting like normal. You can't even kill a kid unless you attack him by surprise. Trash. Third rate? Unlucky. Archer does not slacken his pace as he talks. That we will. Archer is looking at Assassin and something else that is coming from behind him. He knows more than he's letting on. Like, for sure. It's after us. That shadow is coming after us while staining the ground black. Okay, I respect it. You're right. Archer slows down a bit and goes behind us at that instant. Right before he leaves, he gives Ilya a look heavy with regret. Ooh. Why is he giving Ilya a look heavy with regret? Does he know something that we don't, or is he or is it that he knows what we do? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I go through the forest with the sound of clashing swords in my back. As Assassin follows, he is, he is obstructed by Archer's efforts. <clears throat> Unable to sustain the offensive, Assassin is once again forced to retreat. Man, that's a real classic, huh? Their attacks are matched. Even the daggers thrown at me are shot down, and it's obvious that Assassin is not in control of the fight. But it's not because Assassin is weak. <laughs> Archer repels a multitude of daggers. His vigor is incomparable to before. The scales of victory are tipped towards Archer. I don't know why, but he is as strong as a fierce god right now. You'll love to see it. I mean, it's just gotta be the context of the situation then, right? Protecting Ilya <sighs> and Tosaka. With even the strongest attack repelled, Assassin raises his voice as he retreats. 
in response. <laughs> Archer must consider it his chance of victory as Archer charges. Hey, that's awfully convenient, huh? He cuts the white skull with one blow. The black cloak scatters in all directions. Assassin retreats, clutching at his broken mask. It is not a retreat to regroup, but a retreat to save his life. The black servant runs away from Archer and disappears into the trees. And I don't know if we have that chance, but Tosaka looks relieved. Behind her. Uh oh, yeah. So I was just gonna say, I don't know if we have the chance. It appears as if born from the tree's shadows. She looks behind her. At the same time, the black shadow extends its tentacle and... Tosaka! Oh no. I won't make it even if I run. I'll witness Tosaka getting pierced by that black tentacle. <laughs> but the one I actually see impaled is Archer, who pushes Tosaka aside. Uh, I was gonna say, hey, there's no way Archer would just let that happen, man. Tosaka looks up at Archer without comprehension. Man, that's twice you've been saved by Shiro now. It's the end for Archer. He's still breathing and he's not bleeding much. It should be possible for him to heal himself even if he is pierced, as long as it's not fatal. But somehow, I understand that Archer cannot fight anymore. That thing kills servants. No matter how strong a heroic spirit one is, one cannot beat that black shadow as long as one is summoned as a servant. I vaguely comprehend that fact for some reason. Uso. Bro, is Archer down too? We're down to what, just Ryder? Tosaka must have felt the same thing. She calls to Archer with a trembling voice, stands up unsteadily, and... Archer shouts, stops her cold. Yeah, he's right, we gotta go. Whoa. Whoa. That is... That is... Different from what we've seen before. The forest is dying. All the magical energy here is being sucked by that shadow. For some stupid reason, it reminds me of a water balloon. Actually, it kind of does. It's like putting more water into an already full balloon. It's expanding beyond capacity. I get the bad image of it explode. We'll get sucked up. If we stay here, we'll be engulfed for sure. Archer pulls out the tentacle that pierced him and starts to run to Tosaka. Then I... Ooh. Oh, shoot. Yikes. <laughs> That's tough. Um... I mean, if we're all in danger, we have to protect Ilya, right? It just feels like, like this is like, this route is so much about her. In a lot of ways, right? Not to soccer's extent, but it feels like she's really important. I feel like we can't just let her die here. But at the same time, it feels like, can we just let Tosaka die? This feels wrong. Archer dying to protect Tosaka, and then what, just letting her die anyways? Is that right? Like, but he was also actively trying to protect Ilya, you know? What exactly did he say? He took Ilya's hand to protect her until the very end. 
Even Archer. Oh, I almost just quit the game. Yeah, that would have been bad. Uh, well, not really. I just saved. Um, I mean, I feel like we have to protect Ilya. Even Archer seems to think it's the right thing to do. I'll protect Ilya. Can't try to save two people. Osaka has Archer, but Ilya has no one. Then I have to take Berserker's place. Yeah. I tackle Ilya, forcing her to the ground. And the instant I cover her body with my own. My vision and perception is filled with black. Oh, man. It's hot. My body is almost blown away. The condensed and released wave of magical energy rages through the forest as a storm. It's not there. My vision is painted black. If it's this dark, even though I can clearly see, a black sun must have come falling down. My body is not there. It probably melted from the heat. My body is not there. The loss of sen my sense of touch is more disgusting than the pain. But that's a problem. I can't protect Ilya unless I have a body. The black shadow tries to take Ilya. I flail my right arm to drive it off. Embracing her with that same arm, I press her to the ground. And I finally realize, my body's there. My body must be there, or else I couldn't have protected Ilya. And I panicked too much. All I lost was my left arm. That's the only part of me that vanished without trace. The rest of my body is still there. He just lost his left arm. But I still have the same. But I still have the sense of loss. I only lost one of the two. But it feels like I lost my whole body. It's disappearing. The shadow fades away without trace. Its energy spent. Ilya's safe. My ears must be numb as I can't hear what she's saying. What? happened to Tosaka? Archer is there. His red cloak is painted a deeper red, and he's so weakened that he might disappear in the next second. How strange. Why is she here? If we... If we do what? Is Archer about to be like, yeah, Shiro, you can take your future arm. Maybe Magic Crest, too. Archer and Ryder are talking. What the hell is going on? And in the end... Okay, so she's fine. He tenderly runs his finger through Tosaka's hair. My vision fades to black. Dude, all I can think, like, oh, maybe I'm just, like, reading this wrong. Is he about to somehow, like... Give, give us his arm and essentially give us his power like that's all i can think that it would actually accomplish or maybe he's literally just giving us an arm but all i can think is what if we just suddenly were as powerful as archer like that'd be insane that's all i'm thinking i'm not gonna be like disappointed if that doesn't happen it's just all i can think right now my vision fades to black the dark sun no longer shines in the forest then darkness must be falling on my consciousness <laughs> No, not Archer. Archer bids farewell in a voice that sounds just like mine. I wonder why. Crazy. Here we go again. Interlude 10 3. The shadow wavers. The Red Knight is covered in blood. Tosaka Rin is sitting on the ground, dumbfounded. About five meters away from them stands a silver-haired girl and Emi Ashiro, hand in hand. The shadow wavers. After shrinking like a dead tree, the shadow expands like a blowfish. No, its poisonous nature is like an uglier deep sea fish. The expansion continues without limit, swelling outward and dyeing the forest black. At that instant, the Red Knight dies protecting Tosaka Rin, and Emi Ashiro survives by pure luck. It is fortunate that the ground is uneven. 
The expanding shadow passes over Emiyashiro, who was in a hollow pit. Wow, that is lucky. But his left arm is above its rim, unable to share in that fortune. <laughs> oh yeah, she saw that. She wakes up. It's been half a day since she sent Ryder to guard Shiro. Mato Sakura, who shared vis vision with her servant to follow the situation without ever leaving the house, is brought back to reality with that scene. Oh my. Oh, he got hurt all right. She feels like vomiting. Her vision is blurred as if she had lost it, because she cut the shared vision off by force. Her body is sweating, and as soon as she breathes... What's in her stomach rises up to her throat. She runs into the dressing room. She's covering her mouth with her hands, and as soon as she gets to the sink... Oh, she's throwing up. She vomits out everything in her stomach. She stands there with her head down, shoulders heaving. Her long hair flutters like a curtain, hiding her face from the mirror. He didn't need that anyways. She recalls the nightmare. There's no mistake about the vision. Emiyashiro's left arm was swallowed by the shadow while protecting the silver-haired girl. It melted away without trace from the shoulder down. Don't worry, he's gonna come back with- He's coming back with a left arm, don't worry about it. Sakura masochistically yells at herself for considering such a thing. She feels a chill and a strange uplift, not able to think about what happened and what she should do. Y'all, I have another crazy theory. I don't know. Here we go again, guys. <laughs> Let's get to the end of the interlude. We get to the end of the interlude. She feels a chill and a strange uplift, not able to think about what happened and what she should do. All she knows is that she hates herself. She previously got the idea that Emiyashiro were injured to a point where he wouldn't be able to go outside and not be in danger anymore. <laughs> Yes, she was wrong. It will not solve anything. Was it simply carelessness that made her wish for him to be hurt? Now he has been wounded, regardless of her wishes. Not a wound that will keep him indoors, but one that threatens his very life. There's no difference between the two. That's what it means to be injured. Why did she think that a misfortune to lose a part of one's body is a good thing? <laughs> the nausea does not go away. She does not stop vomiting even after throwing up everything gastric juice and blood. She thinks that the sharp pain in her stomach and the scratch of her throat is like a punishment to condemn her. And after a while, her nausea finally goes away when the gastric juice runs out and she regains her composure. She breathes heavily. Her shoulders are moving up and down painfully. She puts her hands on the sink and tries to calm down as if she's just finished running a marathon. See, there it is. In a trance, she speaks her true feelings. A short murmur. Still breathing heavily, she raises her head. The figure in the mirror is crushed by a feeling of guilt. The apologetic expression is caused by her worry for Emiyashiro's well-being. She truly wishes for his safety. The mirror reflects a face with a crooked smile. Hmm. Our interludes always have so much. They're always so interesting. All right, before we move on, I don't know. I don't know if this is actually like a real theory or just an interesting observation. Uh, mark. So I just want to say, it's kind of starting to feel like there actually might be a link, like for real this time, a link between the shadow and Sakura. I know, I know, hey, you're making another link with Sakura, right? I know, I'm reaching. Am I reaching? Maybe. But here's the thing. So, you gotta think about it. We had, we had the, um, the, the vision of a, oh, goodness, hold on. I gotta check one of my videos, make sure my timeline's not wrong before I make this theory. Okay, actually, my timeline definitely was a little wrong. Um, so, I can't really use that as proof anymore. Um, so, never mind, just ignore that. 
Um, I thought something happened before it did. Um, so this isn't really a real like theory at this point, but it's just something to note. Um, when we keep in mind that we saw Sakura twice, wish for Shiro to be hurt, right? So that he couldn't fight anymore, right? Well, the first time to get hurt so bad he can't go out and fight anymore, and then the next to just just see him hurt, right? Pretty much so he couldn't fight anymore though was the real reason. And that shadow went out and hurt him. It didn't kill him. He got unlucky enough that only his left arm was gone, right? Um, I'm not saying there's an actual connection there. The interesting, to, they're like, that's a stretch. That alone is a stretch. But the interesting thing to me is when we consider the fact that we, when Shiro recalled the shadow in this episode, it flashed to a picture of Sakura. Why would it do that? I don't know right um this isn't some theory immediately that oh like it's sakura it's sakura's will like manifest or anything like that is it possible yes frankly it is it is possible that, that is the case that it's sakura's deep emotions somehow given form right it's very possible um but i'm not necessarily ready to say that yet like say for sure like i think that is the case <laughs> However, it's just worth noting that there seems to potentially be some kind of connection there in Shiro's mind even, right? Because that was what he thought about. He, he saw a picture of Sakura, right, in his head when he thought about that, that uh, like, the shadow. And that's just interesting, right? And that's, that's just something I'm thinking about right now. Um, again, like, this isn't necessarily a theory yet. More evidence might, like, make it one. But if it's something that I'm going to be looking out for, I might as well mention it, right? I'm going to look for evidence of more links, right? Um, and if there are more links, then I might elevate it to, like, I really think this is going to happen status. As of now, it's a very interesting possibility that I need to look out for. Maybe it just gets easily disproved, and it's just weird that Shiro had that thought, right? Maybe his only re the only reason he thought that is because it sucks up magical energy, right? And Sakura does that too, right? Like, whether by her choice or not, right? Um, it's going around sucking up magical energy. I mean, frankly, that's just another connection, but that could just be coincidence, and that could be exactly why Shiro had that thought without thinking about it, right? Um, but like I said, if I'm just going to be looking for any more potential links in the future or connections, I figure I might as well mention it. Anyways, let's move on. It's hot. I'm trapped in a sultry stone room. The heat radiating from my shoulders like a plague of microscopic bugs eating my cells. My shoulder. The place where my arm used to be is covered with honey. And ants are swarming on it so it looks like a carpet. What? It's hot. My body is burning from within. This isn't like a sultry stone room, but more like a sealed frying pan. I hear the sound of something burning and realize that I've been scorched black. It's hot. The heat melts my mind, leaving my body untouched, slowly and fiercely. It burns through my genes as if trying to overwrite them. Is this nightmare finally coming to an end? It's hot. The hole is sealed so that the ants cannot escape. It's hot. 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 The hole is in my shoulder. I don't know why, but my missing left arm became a gateway, allowing the ants to flood into my body. And the entrance, the hole to let them out is sealed with flesh that's not mine. In a roundabout way, it is. It's changing. It's changing to something I don't know. It's coming in. Knowledge I shouldn't have is flowing into me. This is battle experience and battle information. <laughs> is it? Is he actually going to get all of, like, Archer's, like, knowledge and battle experience? Oh, yep, there they are. Kancho and Bakia, what's up? This is a noble phantasm. It's not the pair of swords, Concho and Bakia. Favoring the treasured swords made by an ancient blacksmith, he himself was a blacksmith heroic spirit. That's why he creates. He duplicates everything he sees and understands. No, it's not duplication, but projection. A unique magic that reproduces the real thing using an image in the caster's mind. And the heat burning my mind tells me to manage this skill. There's more. All kinds of weapons. Don't 
kid me. That's impossible. It won't fit. I don't know about projection. I'm not at that level yet. Cutting corners like this will destroy my body. First of all, I have my hands full of myself. I can't memorize or use someone else's ability. I don't have the needed power to begin with. And we're strangers with no connection, so there's no way it will become familiar with my body. No, I won't be able to bear it even if it becomes familiar with my body. You can't put time out of order or destroy the regularity, even if you help me. I don't have the skills to handle it. Nonsense. That's false, kid. Oh. My consciousness slowly returns. I'm sleeping on an unfamiliar bed in an unknown room. I raise my body. I think I met Saber at the forest, ran away with Tosaka and Ilya. Hey, Ilya. Our eyes meet. Ilya's beside the bed, staring at me with blank amazement. Yeah, that's one way to put it. I sigh with relief. I don't get the situation, but I'm glad Ilya's all right. Yeah, Ilya charges at me. I think she really thought we died for her sake. She thought we went full berserker protecting her and then also died. And now she just, she's glad that, she's obviously very glad that we're alive. That really need, doesn't need saying. Hugging me, she buries her face on my chest and repeats herself over and over. Man, I don't get what's going on, but I can't do anything if she's crying like this. As I speak, I feel like a long knife is thrust into me. <laughs> Unable to bear the pain, I tear my chest with my right hand. I'm sorry. All I could think about is some of the the Chunibyo protagonists or like the characters that I've seen before, and I all I could think is like his like he can't contain his trembling left arm. Reminds me of like a Wayne from Fire Emblem or even like Okabe from uh, Stein's Gate. It's just funny to me. Sorry, I don't quite get it. I don't, but I want to escape this pain as quickly as possible. <laughs> I relax my mind. Once I start meditating, I quickly understand which part of me is abnormal. I can control it more or less if I know the origin and the pain. I just need to create a barrier so that the foreign substance can't enter my body. That's crazy. I wonder why. Seems like Ilya knows what's causing the pain. I look at myself and notice that I'm wearing big hospital clothes. No, these are more like restraints. All I can move is my right arm. Everything else is firmly belted down, and I can't take them off myself. Boy, they were, they were worried he was going to go sicko mode, huh? Ilya looks away awkwardly. What's good, Kodamine? Then, a person I really don't want to see appears. あちらも持ち直した。こちらは自己説明だけだからな。用がなければ退出したまえ。どうだか。私は素人と一緒に外に出るの。あなたが本当に何もしないのなら。she said, yeah, I'm not going anywhere without Shiro. Come on, what do you mean, cuz? Nope. This is just very different, right? I'm not surprised that Ilya got to the point where she's like that close with us, but it's weird in a way. Okay. 
罪でおとなしく座っているそうねじゃあそうさせてもらうわイリア passes コトミネ and walks to the wall さて状況説明の前に先ほどの疑問に答えておこうあまり驚くなよエミヤシロコトミネ reaches out He unbuckles the belt and removes the coverings. <laughs> the arm there is not Emi Ashiro's arm. I can tell even through the wrapped cloth. My left arm is not part of my body. It is a foreign substance that should not be there, attached by opposing the natural providence. Kotomine. Kore. Archer no hidari udeda. Archer honin no ishio son choshi. 彼の遺体からお前に移植したアーチャーの意思は尊重あいやそれより遺体ってあいつはいや移植が済んだ後消滅したここに運ばれた時点で死に体だったのだがよくも終わるまで持ったものだアーチャーの持つ特殊技能ゆえだろうがな Man, they really brought that into play, huh? Archers have been eliminated And the remaining servants are Zokin's assassin, Sakura's rider, and. No. I don't think I can call her a servant anymore. Why? Archer has gone. Then, if his body is left, it's not strange. You'd think that. If he was killed before the execution, he would have left his body on his right side. But you know, that's why Archer was killed in the past. He was killed in the past. お前の体に植え付けたものだエミヤシロウの魔術回路とつなげお前自身の魔力で現世に受肉させている英霊の肉 Definitely worth the energy you expend into it, huh? その手術がなった時点でそれはお前の肉体となったその後ならばアーチャーが消えようと左腕は残るその左腕はすでにお前の腕なのだからな It was more or less already his in a way, but. I wonder if anyone's gonna make the connection there. So, that. アーチャーの体に傷は少なかったからな。彼はお前に唯一無事な肉体を提供することで、死にゆくお前を生かしたのだ。The left arm that melted. The heat that violated my mind. And this left arm that is not mine. Everything tells me that the event in the forest really did happen. I fell in that forest. I was saved by Archer after that. I feel like in normal circumstances, probably not. Everyone calling this man a fake priest. Put some respect on his name now. セジは受け取るがそう手放しで喜べることではない異なる霊体同士の接合は禁じと呼ばれるなぜなら行ったところで絶対に失敗するからだ霊体魂の蘇生復元は魔術では扱えない神秘である故に今回も形だけ成功した後でショック死すると思ったのだが But here he is There's only one natural explanation, right? Like. Shiro and Archer are different. I know I just knew. If we were to connect the two, we could make a connection. Lily looks away and lets her eyes wander sadly. She knows. She knows. Oh. Ma, that reason I don't know. I know that the relationship was good for you. That's all I know. But. Dang, I wonder what it is. I flex my left arm to test his words. 
Oh, he's flexing on him. I don't feel anything. I don't even feel pain. It's like a lump of dead meat. It doesn't move no matter what I do. It's like a hand numbed by loss of circulation. The sensation of a part of my body not moving brings mental fear rather than physical pain. The left arm is just a piece of metal. One might feel constricted like this if one became a tin man. Might take some time. つなげたばかりではそれが限界だ。数日経てば馴染む。<笑> So he got a limited but very immense power up. But the option is there. レカクとしてエミア what is that? In short, that means I'll certainly die if I try to do what Archer does even once. Is this That's convenient. There's no way we don't figure it out, like figure out how to use it eventually, right? それを防ぐため、マルティンの正解譜で左腕を覆っている。その布を巻いている限り、左腕からの侵食はある程度抑えられるはずだ。ちょっと待て。ある程度抑えられるって。それじゃ完全には抑えられん。そうだな。アーチャーの腕を使おうと使う前と結局はその腕に侵食される。Man, then he better learn to live with it, huh? That doesn't seem likely, but I think he probably did just lose some lifespan, but worth it? I don't know. I feel like there's a good chance the plot goes in the direction of him figuring out how to, like, take advantage of it, but we'll see. なが生きがしたいのなら腕と拮抗するほどの魔術師に成長しろそうなれば正外譜を巻かずとも左腕の封印はできる何私の見立てでは左腕に食いつぶされるまでにあと十年それだけの猶予があるのだ一人前になって左
I exit and find myself in the courtyard. The sky is dark, and it's already nighttime. I feel like we're gonna slowly acclimate to it and then realize, like, maybe not even realize, like, just finally come to accept the fact that Archer is us and then we'll be able to use it, like, if anything. I feel like there's no way they give us a literal power up in our left arm and at no point does Shiro ever use it. Like, that just, there's no way. Like, there's no shot. If you ask me. Tosaka glares at me as soon as I enter the chapel. I don't know what I did to deserve it, but I'm relieved to know that she's alright. あるわけないでしょ。これ以上あんたに借りを作ったら、それこそ命を担保にされかねないじゃない。ヘカオマフェイクプリストにもあるメン。そうか。ではこれで解散ということになるが、一応監督役として聞いておこう。これからどうするつ
そうか戦うというのなら止めはせん絶望的な戦力差だが魔党造剣は小物だからな何らかの策はあるだろう Let's hope so. We look at each other silently. Some plan, huh? I can't come up with one by myself. Well, Tosaka, we just might figure out how to beat the old man. Maybe Ilya, too? Our conversation ends. The treatment is over, so Kodomine requests that we leave, as we are not asking for protection here. I don't want to say anything, but. Anna, Ilya has a place to go. Oh? There's a shadow, but. セラもリズムを呼べば出てくるから帰る場所はあるけどどうしてそんなこと聞くのシロいや一人じゃ危ないだろうイリアさえ良ければ俺の家にいてもらいたいんだ I'm sure その方が何かと便利だと思うし、so、happy about that choice. いいけど行かないシロのとこにはあの女がいるもの Dang, he got beef, or she got beef with soccer or something? I mean, she is dangerous, so I don't blame her, but then Ilya answers me in a weird way. I stare at Osaka because I don't understand what she means by I don't mind, but I won't go. Oh, she looks like she doesn't want to interfere. Cool. Mato Sakura o eranda no ka? Amy as Shiro. Koto? Ilya's feel wa watashi ga azgatte mo kama wa nai ga. このまま城に戻しては、造剣にさらわれるだけだからな。お断りだ。イリアは俺が引き取る。And if Ilya doesn't want to go with you, like... お断りよ。イリアは私が借りるんだから。<笑> right, man, she's getting pulled in three directions. お断りするわ。私、自分の居場所は自分で決められるもの。それは残念だ。では。イリアスフィールは遠坂の屋敷に滞在するのだなバ,バカ言わないでアインツベルンのマスターは遠坂の家になんて行かないんだから you have a better plan right now? あそうじゃああんたどこに行くのよシローのところも嫌だ教会もお断り私の家もダメだって言うならもう城に帰るしかないわよ分かってるわ元からあそこが私の工房なんだから他のマスターの世話になんてならないパーサーカーがいなくたって私は一人でやってくんだから She's an independent woman that don't need no help. あらやっぱりそうなんだ一度殺しかけたシローに助けられたくせに恩も感じずにお城に戻るわけね<笑>聞いたエミヤ君あれだけ助けてあげたのに嫌われたのね<笑>この子あなたの家なんて狭苦しくてごめんだって言ってるわよ Why do you have to throw a shot at our house? Why is our house catching a sneak dis? Our house catching strays. I don't know what to do. 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 シロから離れないといけないからで。シーシュ。OK、is there a reason why? えはあ、そうなんだ。頼りになるならないの前に、そもそもエミヤ君が嫌いだったわけね。Man, she is なんだ、そういうことは早めに言ってよ。ソサカス。Oh, she's going in on、uh, Ilya. Stop. ソサカ calmly criticizes Ilya. This is bad. This is I'm worrying that this will turn bloody. So, so, not to lie. What does she, she don't got yet on the eat and I'm all. What does she got yet on the motto? It's no good on the car. It's a hundred percent Sakura. Like, that's the sa. Nine inky, eh, Emiya. Yeah, no kidding. Saka smiles gently, and Ilya glares at her with vexation. Um, whose house is Ilya going to? Good question. In the end, Ilya will be coming to my house. <laughs> All the... Oh man, okay. Alright. Tosaka and Ilya leave the chapel, arguing. 
I guess I can say they're getting along. All things considered, yeah, I might as well. Our conversation is over. It's our problem now, so there's nothing to talk about with Kodamine. I'll go after them and leave the chapel. But then... Yeah, we don't care. We'll fight. The priest gives his usual warning. Like if we fight, that left arm is going to want to get involved. So, the That's a bit unexpected. I thought he was going to make more sarcastic remarks. So, why is he suddenly concerned about how Sakura is doing? あんたがさくらの心配をして何になる。分かっていないな。私はお前の体の話をしているのだ。いいかね、エミヤシロ。お前も危うい体だが、マトウサクラはさらに危うい爆弾を抱えている。お前は戦わなければ無事だが、マト
and makes a ridiculous demand. <laughs> I'm really lost. I try to figure out what Tosaka means. <laughs> yes, Ilya can be reasonable after all. <laughs> and the music cuts out. That, that show, like, thank you. Somebody can be reasonable. And the music just cuts out. Oh, God. I see. So she's missing the point, too. <laughs> あんたこそ体現白じゃない。まさか一度見逃してあげたから白は自分のものだなんて思ってたの?まあ、she <laughs> almost Y'all are really just out here claiming this man's life. I can almost hear their teeth grinding as they glower at each other. Wait for it to end. Well, it's going to be troublesome no matter who wins. <laughs> They're still fighting all the way to the bridge. It seems they've realized that fighting solves nothing, so they've chosen me to make the final decision. どっちかって何が？だからどっちのサーバントかっていうことよ。シロのことはまだ聞いてなかったし、ここではっきりさせた方がいいでしょ？ボイ、あんな、anybody <laughs> Y'all are something else, bro. I don't need to think about it. One has the right to order me around is... <laughs> I actually have to choose? <laughs> what? Is this actually a relevant choice, or is this just like a point to the respected person? I don't... What? I mean... We do have Archer's arm. So in a roundabout way, I mean, I guess Tosaka, right? I guess? I want to see if this actually makes a difference. Or Saber. Womp womp. Gee, Shocker's all the way up there. Not surprising. But, that's what, three and a half, three? I don't know, might make a difference, but like, what? Is this choice actually relevant? Like, <laughs> just funny to me. I don't know. Yeah, let's think, if it actually is relevant, who would be better? They're both very strong as magi. And then, I mean, the thing is, we know Ilya seems to have heaven's feel, whatever that actually is, right? And so, I don't know, maybe her, but I feel like it's probably not relevant. I'm just gonna go Tosaka. Is it just a relationship point? Maybe not. Maybe it just isn't updated yet. なんで<笑> Tell us! Say it! 
。そういう。それってサーバントと何も変わらないだろう。父さんがそう言うなら、俺はサーバント扱いでも構わないよ。Ilya, just finished your sentence. I confirm with Tosaka. とさかおい、人に話ふっといて無視するな。あ、そ、そうよ。わかってるじゃない。私のアーチャーがあなたに託した以上、私たちは運命共同体なんだから。アーチャーが預けた分、しっかり働いて返してよね。I hate seeing that face on Ilya. I feel so bad. Like, I feel like I made the wrong choice. もちろん。借りたものはきっちり返さないと、ネザメガワレイ。That's right. No matter how things ended up this way, my left arm has been replaced by Archer's. But Archer disappeared without fulfilling his contract with Tosaka. Only right that I succeed the promises he's made. Ilya, say it! Finish your sentence! じゃあ、一旦ここでお別れね。家に戻って荷物を持ってくるから。<laughs> Boy, I'm sure Saka is going to be real happy to have Tosaka and Ilya roll up. And we have a new arm. You often to piss Sakura off. Oh, so. Tosaka sighs and starts walking in the opposite direction. Iria, Ucha Kotsudazo. Honda to Tosaka needs to take under. Chotto, eh? Ringo Teo Castel Sheet, the Yukara, Casqueta Gerino. Boy, we gotta find a way. We gotta find a way to explain this one to Sakura. At least going to help Tosaka? Tosaka, Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?Honto?
そのようなものは食事と同じだ願いとは自身を叶えるものだが自ら願いを叶えては人間は救われん The priest keeps staring up at the statue and beyond it to ten years in the past when he still had a wish. Ooh. The man is a child his father was gifted with on a pilgrimage in 1967. The name Kire is supposedly a word of prayer. Of a prayer. The father named his son in the hope he would become pure and beautiful. The boy grew up according to his expectations. Even as a young child, he had morals and good sense, showing such great insight that people thought he was precocious. The father was delighted to be blessed with a great successor, and the son knew of his father's delight. It is a great pleasure for a parent to know his child is gifted. That must have been why the man considered him valuable. Understanding this, the boy grew just as his father expected. There was no doubt. His inability to love his father was unrelated to meeting the man's expectations. The boy named Kire grew up healthy. But there was one point. He could not understand the beauty of which his father spoke. One morning, he realized the inconsistency. He woke up, raised his head, and knew. He was not sure why he understood at that moment. No, he wondered why it took him so long to realize. In either case, he knew what he had forgotten. His father prayed for him to be beautiful and named him Kire. That had always been his question. The things his father considered beautiful, the boy had never considered beautiful. It was as simple as that. He considered moths beautiful instead of butterflies. He considered poisonous plants beautiful instead of roses. He considered the evil beautiful instead of the good. He had a common man's sense of morality, recognizing that it is correct to be good. But by his nature, the boy was only interested in the exact opposite. Interesting. Nobody can understand the agony he felt. Even Kodamine himself was never certain whether it was agony or not. But he worked hard. He tried to be pure and beautiful, and pursued something he did not have from the start. Shaving away the skin, ripping off the flesh, and dislocating the bones. He even tried looking within his body for what he could not find in his mind. His father spent over ten years on this pilgrimage wearing thorned shoes. The distance he walked could stretch to the moon. It was not for physical pain. For missionaries, the mental pain is far more significant. The boy abstained from eating during their pious act. If he was a sinner by nature, And according to the morals he believed in, he needed to punish himself to maintain balance in the world. Ten years passed. Unable to reach the epiphany he sought, he arrived at a single conclusion in its place. It was simple. In short, he did not have the sense to feel normal happiness. Good matters that people considered right and find happiness in. Philanthropy, trust, glory, safety. Such matters did not delight him, and it's just that he was born with the deficiency. All he took pleasure in was the suffering of others. Murder by others, love and hatred of others, degradation of others. Such negative concepts were the only things that made him feel happiness. His misfortune was carrying a sense of morality, even when he had such a mind. The child understood at a young age that he was not in accord with the world, and he tried his best to overcome it. He did not surrender to his condition by indulging in twisted pleasure. He tried to save himself, one who could not find happiness in any normal way, by turning himself into a normal person. And the path was his creed. To become a priest and preach like his father. It is said that God forgives everything. So I thought God would even save someone who was not born with it, like himself. But the result was tragic. He abode by the rules of God, followed the law, and lived modestly, but he could not find any pleasure greater than the pain of others. He believed in the church's teaching that forbade immorality, yet immorality was all he had. But there was no anguish there. From the beginning, he sought after something that did not exist. He did not lose something he had, so there was no, no reason for him to grieve. The only thing that concerned the priest as he matured was the question, why? Yes, at every crossroad of his life, the pleasure of committing crimes, one could understand if he reveled in his own corruption, satisfying his urges by committing crimes himself. Wealth gained from evil deeds. It would make sense if he entrapped others out of greed and obtained wealth. But what was wrong with him to not even have the option of turning from good to evil? Who could possibly be born a defective being and end his life still detached from the world? Do they not come into this world with a premise that they harm the world? Call of good sense, acknowledgement of morals, trial of justice. Every one of these conclude that evil should not exist. But what about it? If it should not exist, why are such things created? That is right. 
One is a deficiency one should not be born. The world hates evil and removes the faults, but something that was never wanted was given life. There are beings that exist to be hated and die. The man inquired where the crime was. His reward for years of anguish and blind devotion was not salvation, just why. It is a pure question, and also anger towards something unknown. That was an interesting look into his character. I feel like before now I hadn't quite understood his character. But it, it makes a lot more sense now, honestly. Maybe I should have understood it before now. Maybe I was just, like, missing key pieces. Right. But this, like, kind of made it click. He's, a, he's an interesting one, Kire. Hm. Only takes pleasure from other people's misfortunes and suffering. Yet he has been raised to be a good person and has morality, right? It's just he doesn't take any pleasure from it. He knows that being a priest is good, right? And that the way he helps people is good. But it doesn't bring him any pleasure. Interesting. I mean, he did kind of explain all of this in the fate route, but I guess it never really clicked to me why. The inquiring words bring it back to the present. The priest, Kodamine Kire, nods in self-derision. それが私の仕事だからな。それは生まれてくるものに未人の関心も持たなくともか。That <laughs> really got to the heart of it, huh? むろんだ。前回の聖杯戦争でさえ、私は聖杯にもその中身にも関心はなかった。あの時にあったものは。Somebody who had no morals. But, what, like... Decided to be good? Just decided to be good, right? Like... Interesting. Because, I mean, from what we know of Kiritsugu, he is a, he was a ruthless person, right? You could argue he doesn't have morals, right? And yet, he still gets to do, he, he still does the, like, did those, those good deeds. He still had, like, I don't know. Hard to explain. I guess takes pleasure in doing good things. Right? Unlike Kire, who takes no pleasure in doing good, only takes pleasure in other people's suffering, even though he has a moral code and knows it's wrong. So if we want to take it as the exact opposite, it's he, like Kiritsugu had no moral code, but was, like, was happy to do good. Right? Or willing to do good, at least. Or was able to do good. Right? And take, and take pleasure from it. Right? In a way. Is that really accurate with what we know, though? I mean, there's still a lot we don't know about Kiritsugu. So what we do and do not know... Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot that we don't know, so... I mean, if he's saying one thing, right, that's contradictory to what we might know from Shiro's perspective, it might be more correct what he knows. Because, I mean, Shiro kind of has a really biased perspective. We haven't seen Kiritsugu uh, when he was at, like when he was in his war, right? We will eventually, I know, Fate Zero, right? But we haven't seen that yet, so... What Shiro knows of him is very different than what somebody like uh, Kodamine knows of him. But I just feel like it's clicking a lot more to me. Like, there are, like, Kiritsugu and Kodamine's relationship and just Kodamine in general. But the priest ponders. He can only find pleasure in other suffering, but he's interested in the end of this Holy Grail War. Zoken's actions behind the scenes. Another Holy Grail that is about to be born. Someone called All Evils of This World was brought into existence by the people, but not wanted by the people. 
It would conceive such a thing. Maybe that is. Zengaku no shozai. Kara ni tsumekomare nagara kaeru koto no nakatta mono. The Holy Grail cannot give answers. The wish granting machine fulfills its owner's desire. So no revelation can be obtained even if someone without a wish obtains it. But... The man narrows his eyes. The priest is smiling in front of the statue. That smile is that of a dying woman. An expression is worn by a man who has with no interest or desire. His eyes aren't showing joy. The priest, like an angel that fell to the ground. Looks up at the distant sky with cursing eyes. Still asking why. Jeez. Why did that interlude out? Why was that so high when it's normally like way at the bottom of my screen? That's just kind of weird. Ugh. Man. Well, we're not calling the episode here. Even if I am... Jeez. Kind of hoping we reach a good stopping point soon, but I don't want to end it here. I do not want to end it here. Just in case, we'll just go ahead and save. In case I change my mind. What? I don't understand how this, the save pictures work in this game. Like, why? Why is it the same thing that many times in a row? <laughs> that scene happened hours ago. Actually, at this point. I trudge up the hill. The town is unlively. It's still 8 or 9 o'clock, but the town is desolate and devoid of any human presence. Before I know it, I'm stopping and leaning against a wall. My left arm is burning. Maybe my attention went away by being alone, but my left arm started to hurt ever since I got to this hill. Can't get my breathing together. My arm gets hotter with every step. When it gets hotter than my normal temperature, pain attacks my chest from my arm. I lean on a fence and take a deep breath. I think I understand where the pain is coming from. Basically, it's trying to cool off. I don't know how, but my left arm gets hotter every time it moves. When it overheats, the arm sends the excess to the rest of my body. That heat is enough to burn me, causing the pain. The heat enters my body with a sharp pain, and it's more like a cut than a burn. Every time I feel the red dizziness, I feel like I'm getting a long knife inserted from my shoulders and churned inside of me. It's not something I can bear many times. I had my stomach torn by Berserker and my ribs crushed by Ryder. Even with such experiences in mind, the prospect of getting stabbed by my own body sends a chill through me. Boy, you better seal that thing or learn to live with it. I try to relax while looking up at the sky. It's been 20 minutes since I parted with Tosaka and Ilya. I should have been home by now. I can't let Sakura see me like this. I have to keep the abnormality of my left arm to myself. I place my hand on my left shoulder and press against the arm covered in red cloth. Hard and rigid as steel. It doesn't even budge. Well... I stopped sweating, and my breathing is back to normal. It's getting late, so I should go quickly. So I should quickly go home and see Sakar while I still look, while I still look well. I thought there was a comma there. There was not. Tadaima. After taking a deep breath, I holler out and enter my house. <sighs> What's up? Maybe Sakura's been waiting all this time, because she's already at the entrance. Huh? 
I take off my shoes and go up into my house. I want to rest for today. I'll fill her in on what's happened today after I drink a cup of tea in the living room. Yeah. Surprise! Tosaka and Ellie are going to live here. Tosaka will be coming soon. I have to tell her about what's going on beforehand or she'll be on guard against Tosaka. Then, Sakura says something with difficulty. She keeps silent. She's looking at my left arm. It's covered with cloth that doesn't look anything like bandages. And if she doesn't, even if she doesn't know what went on, she would assume something happened to my arm. I mean, she knows. She saw it. And she's like, how does he have an arm? Like, what? That is major cap. I pat my left arm to show her it's alright. But Sakura's even more silent now. Sakura? You just lied to her. You just blatantly lied to her. And she knows. Oh yeah, she knows. Oops. Respect for standing up to us. For lying to her face. Her reply is like fire. My insensitivity leaves me speechless. I haven't even considered how Sakura felt all day today, waiting for me here. Sakura. It's iconic, really. あ、yeah, that's Cap. I do look bad. And don't tell Sakura about it so she doesn't get worried. No, I was just putting on a show to look tough. Sorry, Sakura. I was able to get it. I was able to get it, but I didn't get it. Sakura's work is not that bad. I do you don't really expect us to believe that, right? Like, I just knew that your arm wasn't yours and you looked great, but I didn't see you. But I didn't see you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and we're about to bring two more people home. Uh, don't be mad. I'm sure she'll be real happy about that. I scratch my head, but, well, I'm embarrassed, but happy at the same time. Yeah, 
that's bold. Saga must have cheered up if she can say something like that with a big smile. I don't know how to reply to something like that, so... Oh! No, you fool! Oh, you messed up now! You fool! Oh, she's pissed. She, I can already tell. She's pissed. She's giving you that little side glare she does, like... Like, yeah, I, I can already see the sprite. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> okay, never mind. Bro, I thought he just called her Tosaka. I was like, you fool. You are foolish. I asked Tosaka, who was standing behind me. <laughs> Our voices overlap. Did he actually? Wait, he actually might have accidentally called her Tosaka and got bailed. Saka and I both jumped back at the same time. And we give the same reaction again. Fair. <laughs> Oh god. Tosaka sets down a large bag next to the door. Behind her is... Ilya, silently radiating a strange pressure. Dang! <laughs> She's not here to box, bro. Sheesh. Dang, she was ready to go! Sakura clenches her fists and glares at Tosaka. Well, it's more like a frog desperately opposing a glaring snake. それもまだ聞いてなかったのね。いい、桜。とりあえずあなたの処置は保留するわ。私の最優先事項は造剣を倒すこと。あなたとの決着はその後よ。まあ、造剣さえ倒してしまえば、あなたと戦うこともなくな
それじゃあ上がらせてもらうわよほらしろ客間に案内して前に上がった時離れの客間に目をつけてたんだからエリアはどこがいい That's unlucky. I guess Sakura is about to move in with us, bro. To take our room. Dang! Oh my god! I mean, you might be right to have disdain like that, but sheesh! They're carrying on a relaxed conversation, and it sounds like they're close enough now to call each other by name. そうだ、さくら、こっちの子がイリア、バーサーカーはやられちまったけど、なんとかイリアだけは助けられた。父さんが同様、これからうちで預かるけど、仲良くしてやってくれ。I introduce Ilya to Sakura and Sakura to Ilya。よろしくさくら、マキリの娘だそうだけど、軽蔑はしないであげるわ。<笑>一応シロの知り合いみたいだし、特別に人間扱いしてあげる。<laughs> so I'll specially treat you like a human being. <laughs> Man, what a great gift. Thank you, Ilya. You shouldn't have. So this me. Ja, but I see my other tone that you only for my mess. That's the entirety of their introduction. And they follow after Tosaka to the living room. Those families got beef, huh? And dang. Oh, some evil eyes! Look at them! Those are the real mystic eyes! Sakura watches her go with cold eyes. I think that could petrify most people. Dinner commenced like a storm. No, it's misleading to use the word storm. That was more like a calm wind. Since there was no wind, I didn't feel the passage of time, and dinner ended like that. The atmosphere was painfully tense. You have a lot of people who are going Tosaka made dinner by herself after that. I hate to say it, but it tasted better than mine. Sakura might just be, be even with her in Western food, her specialty. Ooh, unlucky. Tosaka senpai, Oryori, chose none this ne. Sakura was torn apart in shock, and she started eating silently. I couldn't do anything extra because I was worried about things like Tosaka's food, the fact that I'm eating Tosaka's handmade meal, Sakura's dejection, Ilya's tension, and Sakura's tension. As a result, I couldn't taste how good Tosaka's meal was. I was just made to realize how perfect Tosaka is throughout the hour. Hmm, unlucky. Don't be having thoughts like that. You're in a relationship, Brody. So. Are we just like ignoring the fact that someone already lives there? Tosaka even washes the dishes perfectly, then heads out. It must be an insinuating remark to Sakura, who stayed at this house today. At least speaks without looking at Sakura and gets up. Yeah, no, that was definitely shade at Sakura. Actually, that wasn't even shade. I was like. That was the, like the entire shadow, bro. That was. <sighs> no. Tosaka is just as expected, but Ilya is acting strange. She's acting as cold towards Sakura as she did towards me the first time we met. Ilya, Sakura to a short time and no xeni. Nanda on any scacaron daro. Yapari, I ain't burn to Makirite, Nakanga Marino cana. According to Kodamine, Einsburn, Makiri, and Tosaka are noble families of Magi who started the Holy Grail War. Seems the Einsburns were the highest ranked, so from her point of view, Tosaka and Sakura must be below her. There's something there. Sakura doesn't reply. She shakes her head back and forth and gradually starts falling back. Sakura! Oh lord. I grab her shoulders to stop the fall. Oh, they smashing, huh? Are... Senpai? How did you do that? You look scary. Sakura hasn't noticed. She looks at me like nothing happened, completely oblivious to her near collapse. No. It's not a bad thing. I don't know that I'd say that, but I let go of her. 
That must be why she noticed. She apologizes for something she doesn't know about. そうですね。じゃあ、お言葉に甘えちゃいます。今晩薬眠れば、きっと明日には元気になってますし。今夜は遠坂先輩にご馳走してもらいましたから、明日の朝私が受け持ちますね。いや、let's have some Let's have some friendly interactions here. Sakura smiles jokingly and gets up. She looks to be standing steadily. It won't change anything to follow her to the guest room. Sakura seems well, so I have to believe in her. そうだな。おごれる遠坂の花を必勝ってやってくれ。桜が最後の鳥出だ。正直、ここで遠坂に一撃くれておかないと後がない。え、任せてください。きっと、ワンパンチしてみせますから。ああ、ワンパンチマン
That's almost certainly wrong, but I feel like it, so my normal arm should be there. <laughs> I can't breathe. My nerves. My nerves. It hurts. I'm alive, but where's my sense? It's cold. Death. Hurry. I have to quickly get it back on. It's scary. The arm below the cloth is it's black. An arm that is not mine. <laughs> not dead? What was I doing? I unwrapped the cloth because of this sudden idea. I don't understand what happened after that. What has been done to me. What will be done to me. It only happened a few seconds ago, but I can't remember at all. I'll die if I release it. The priest's words were true. I don't know what'll happen. What's under this cloth is not mine. I'll slow down because of fear. That's not allowed. Archer's arm wasn't transplanted onto me so that I could cower in fear. Sakura wasn't that different from this morning, but I don't know when she might collapse. I have to defeat Zoken and obtain the Holy Grail before that. I have to think about how to do that. A way to beat Zoken, an assassin with one arm. No, they aren't the only enemies. They're the mysterious enemies, too. Yeah. I don't know their circumstances. I don't know what that black shadow is, nor if Saber became Zoken's servant. All I know is that she's my enemy now. To be honest, I know. We have no chance of victory. I don't know what this pain will be like in the future. The difference in our powers is overwhelming. I'm not even sure about myself. How can I protect Sakura in such a state? I stand up at the sound of footsteps. I know who it is without looking. Hello, Ryder. The servant in a black outfit is silent, like always. She usually doesn't make a sound when she walks. I'm sure she wanted me to hear her coming. Ryder looks down at me silently. Hmm. This is totally unrelated. The Ryder's tall. There's something wrong with me, too, for noticing it now. こちらはまだ何も告げてはいませんが。ね。ああ、今のは違うよ。ライダー、俺より背が高いだろ。もう随分と顔を合わせてきたのに、今になって気がついてさ。我ながら間の抜けた奴だ。そうですか。先ほど
私はさくらがマスターである限り自らの意思で彼女を守る、well, that's good. あ本当にええ意外ですかシロ私が感情を持つことがあいやすまん勘違いしてたそんなふうには見えなかったからつい謝る必要はありません私はさくらとまともに話したことはありませんしさくらも私には話しかけないけれどシロサーバントは自分に近いものに呼ばれるのですあなたがセーバーを召喚したのは偶然ではなくその魂のあり方が近いからでしょうそういった意味で言えば私とさくらは同じものですもともと饒舌ではないのですから会話がないのも当然でしょうそのようなものがなくとも私たちはお互いをよくわかっています Hear warm emotion in Ryder's voice I imagine her to be cruel because of her appearance but maybe Ryder is actually quite gentle or maybe Sakura is quite cruel あそっかあそれはよかったライダーがさくらの味方でいてくれてすごく嬉しい Maybe a little bit of both. そうですかでは私の番ですねシロあなたはさくらがマキリの家にもらわれてから今まで何に耐えてきたか I think we do for the most part I think we know for the most part There's no way I'd know We have a general idea is the better way to put it Well, could have mean it told me what kind of things she went through. わからない。だから、それを口にすることもしちゃいけないと思う。Yes, I'm a magist, and I know what kind of a person Zoken is. Easy to imagine what happened. My imagination should be close to reality, but I should not easily mention that I understand. That's fair. そうね。さくらはあなたに知られないように努めてきた。そのあなたがここでわかるなどと口にすれば、私はあなたを殺している。シーシー、OK。それは、さくらのために。ええ。けれどその必要はなかったようです。She seems happy about that. あなたは未熟で不器用ですが、その真にあるものは信用に足ります。だからこそ、さくらにとってあなたは救いだったのでしょう。長い間彼女の中には諦めしかなかった絶望しただ受け入れるだけの日々が延々と続いていたそこに変化が生じたのはあなたと知り合ってからですシロあなたはさくらに諦め以外のなくしていた諸々の感情を取り戻させたその中で最も大きかったのは痛みと苦しみですがそれでも諦めるだけだった彼女にとってあなたは唯一確かな救いだったのです。うん、いや、I guess her regaining pain and suffering is something.I mean, I guess maybe it's better to feel pain than nothing at all.I don't really know what Ryder is trying to say. I don't understand what Sakura has been through, so I don't know why she likes me. Ryder's words are true because she shares her feelings with Sakura, her master. As if speaking for Sakura, Ryder quietly states, Shiro, you Sakura to be happy to Sakura, to this two years were the best of you. Yeah. With quiet Quiet sorrow and appreciation. But I should have a cut and a sort of a kiss. Tang Sakura no Kofkua Anata Naiki de Sobani, the credit of you cotton. So they got any kind of job and also mono that on that. Rider presses the presses the question on me through her blindfolds, asking me if I understand what that means. For Mato Sakura, the fact that Emi Ashiro is fighting threatens her happiness. So Ryder is condemning me for what I'm planning to do with my body. I tightly grasp my stiff left arm. If I can fight with one arm, I should. I swore to save Sakura. I chose to fight for Sakura and not to stop the war. So, if I stop fighting now, I'll be nobody. Silence falls. 
Ryder is silent, and I have no reply. How long has it been? That's the idea. We'll see if he can go through with it. I don't even need to think about Ryder's question. For now, it's an obvious yes, but... I mean, that's true. He already chose. He already he did choose, so he has to live without any consequences because of that action. Amishiro chose to be Mato Sakura's ally, and I should not have that hesitation. I understand, but I can't express my feelings. Because I realize what those words mean. I understand. Rider leaves as if melting into the night. I watch her disappear, then look up at the sky. Yes, I couldn't answer her because I realized. The mysterious shadow. The unstable left arm. The ideal I sought for years, then threw away. Everything is telling me. But once I obtain the Holy Grail, it can make any wish come true. But my wish to provide Sakura happiness is an illusion that can never become reality. Dang. Yikes. And another end of the why is it red? I see a dream inside the breeding box. Eggs shell. Black yolk. I like save here. There's no memory of the sea of love. Reaching the placenta. The line does not exist from the beginning. Labor expulsion is not allowed and is melted into love. There's no memory of miscarriage. What the heck? Swaying as I walk. Wavering brain is empty. And the grinding and tension is forgotten. What the heck? What is going on? Shivering and trembling. The dried limbs are like paper balloons. Rolling across the ground. Floating comes after maturing. And it's that song again, man. Oh, man. Roaring. 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 The song that played when we saw that shadow for the first time. Hey, just, uh, what? what the? Someone approaches with squeaking. Oh, good <laughs> People approach me. Dried up, laughing voices. I do not remember tempting them. I am scared, so I should go home. Hey, what are you doing? As the song is so creepy. Wait, what? And what are they? They won't walk. What? In town? Ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-
ジーク箱の夢を見る今夜虫を潰した。Excuse me. Okay, we're on two ten. Let's go ahead and save. Why is it still that? Konya, Mushi o Tsubushita. Shiku Bako no Yume o Miru. Who is that? シーク箱の夢を見る Is this somebody I should recognize? シーク箱の夢を見る It is, yeah. Okay, that's, that's what I was thinking. And it literally says play soccer as voice. Wow. Um... I never noticed that you could hover. I would tell you. I was gonna say, if anything, my first thought was Sakura. That's who I assumed it was. And. Hmm. Jesus. That was really creepy. She just what, walked into town, had people follow her, and then murdered them. That's great. That's great. That's lovely. Nice. Okay. Man. All right. This episode was phenomenal, though. We are we're really getting into it, huh? Crazy stuff is just continuing to happen. Um, big twist after big twist. Right, so. One thing I do want to say, remember earlier how I mentioned a potential connection between Sakura and uh, the Shadow? I just want to throw it out there. The song that played when the Shadow appeared just played in an interlude where we were clearly following Sakura. Again, I'm not saying anything for sure, but that's really suspicious. Like, really suspicious. Um, hmm. Jeez. Anyways, the rest of the episode was fantastic. I feel like my outros have been hilariously long recently, and just me kind of retreading stuff I've already said. So I'm going to try to keep this one a little shorter. Um, but... Just so much happened in this episode. I mean, we just start with some scenes at the house, right? Well, fine. Um, but the important part was us going to the forest, right? And the well, everything there, was, it was just insane. Um, us running into Tosaka again, and then going to find Ilya, and Ilya is fighting, like Berserker is fighting the like the shadow. Um, not the shadow itself, but what, like, no, it is the shadow itself, the, 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 like, the pit, right, um, within the shadow, um, or that is the shadow, as far as we can tell, but, you know, fighting assassin Zoken, we had that scene between Ilya and Zoken kind of explaining, like, more and more about Zoken and his quest for immortality and you know, his his views on death and life. Um, interesting stuff. Um, and then, more important, is the fight itself. Um, found Saber. Like a dark version of Saber. And man, is she powerful. She was going blow, blow for blow. Not even. It was just kind of annihilating Berserker. 
the only thing that came of it was a damaged helmet, right? Like, like you can't really say that's blow for blow, even. That's just, oh my god, I cannot believe it. They, they did not just bring Saber back like this. They said, so you know how Saber was, like, briefly an enemy in Unlimited Blade Works, right? Or about to be? Yeah, so what if we took that and then dialed it up to 11? Like, Jesus, man. Dark Saber is not right. This is not right. And then while running away, we chose to save Ilya. And we did. Um, but Shiro lost his arm and Assassin was dying. And they transplanted Assassin's arm into us. I feel like that's going to be huge, right? I feel like there's no way that isn't used as a huge power up at some point, right? Like it's got to be. There's no way they just decide, yeah, you just have his arm now, and uh, yeah, I guess you die in 10 years. Unlucky, right? Um, I feel like they're going to have him use it and like eventually maybe come to learn how to use it. Um, that's a fight, and maybe that's, and that's how they win. Like That's their win condition. And I'm interested to see that. Like, I feel like there's going to be a lot there. Um, of course, I have lots of scenes in the church about that. Um, us inter interacting with Tosak and Ilya again, um, all together. Um, fun interactions, really funny scenes there. <laughs> they were fighting over who owns us. That was something. Um, I might be out of order here, but also interesting uh, for me, uh, one of the more important scenes was um, the interlude with um, with Kotomine. Uh, I, I didn't really... I mentioned this. I feel like I I didn't understand Kodamine's character super well before just now. It makes a lot more. He makes a lot more sense to me now. So this scene was really important uh, for me personally. Um, it, some people might have actually understood his character, and so that scene wasn't nearly as relevant beyond expanding on his backstory. But for me, it finally made a lot of things click. Right. So that was really important. Um, but I mean, then we 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 go back home. I mean. And, I mean, we have, the big thing is the talk with Ryder, really. Um, um, you know, she was talking about how she wants to protect Sakura, how they're similar, right, in a lot of ways. Um, and how, to Sakura, happiness is just being with us. Um, and Shiro kind of realizing that... We can't provide. We can't provide Sakura with that wish. Like he said, even with the Grail, right? Exactly what he said. Yep. An illusion that can never become reality. So he's saying, what? Like you can never just live a normal life with Sakura. And I mean, that sounds about right. Um, whoa, I did not mean to do that. Okay. I did not mean to do that. You know, I don't want to see that yet. Um, but we had that interlude. Now it's just creepy. Um, seems we were following Sakura as she uh, seemingly went into town and murdered people. Um, and I mean, that's, that's a big deal because part of the thing was we knew eventually this would get like leaving Sakura would get innocence involved. And it seems like it has, um, it really seems like it has. Um, and something else that's important about that is when asked if, Shiro could protect Sakura no matter what by Ryder. He couldn't answer, right? He, he, he knows the answer should be yes, given the concessions he's made and the decisions he's already made. But he wasn't able to, he wasn't able to nod, right? So I almost wonder if Shiro's starting to understand that, like, in theory, this, this path isn't really possible and that maybe, I don't, I don't want to say that he regrets it, but that he understands what he's doing is like impossible. It's impossible to protect everyone, right? 
it like from like in, you know let there be no victims it's impossible to make sakura happy in the end um i feel like that's kind of what he's realizing anyways i just thought this was another amazing episode i don't hopefully this conclusion wasn't ridiculously long but i don't want to talk too much longer on it i feel like i said a lot throughout the episode the last few episodes i did long conclusions because i really feel like i didn't talk enough during the episode because like i didn't know what to say during a lot of parts but i feel like i talked a lot today so um anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the episode i obviously i did um man i feel like we're just really getting into it with this route um this route is so good this route is so good um so much interesting stuff happening um i'm i'm excited to see it through to the end see if it tops on uh unlimited blade works for me it's like i feel like that's no simple feat um but it feels like it's got a chance it feels like it's got a chance we'll see we'll see um anyways like i said really enjoying it so far i hope you guys are enjoying watching me play um i hope to record again soon uh, i don't think i'm super busy this week i'll have to check um i ended up really busy last week um I don't think I'm super busy this week, um, which means hopefully there should actually be episodes over the weekend. That's kind of why there weren't any, because that's when I was really busy. Um, so hopefully I can get closer. Hopefully I can just, you know, upload a few episodes this week again, uh, just like I did last week, except a little, maybe more, a little evenly spaced out um, or just more of them. That's fine, too. Um, but anyways, that is all for this episode. Whenever the next episode comes out, I uh, hope to see you guys there. Peace.